Welcome to TT Boy TV. Today we have one of the most famous porno stars of all time. One of the sweetest, most personal, sharpest. I mean, just such a nice person and so pretty. The incredible Christy Canyon. Thank you for coming. Damn, you know, I was watching your interview with Peter North last night and I thought, I better get as good of an intro as you gave Peter North. And Peter, I got a better one. <gasps> oh, I did not say that, did I? It was my Tourette's talking. <laughs> you don't got Tourette's. <laughs> no, only when I need to say I do. You're making me hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said in 1990, baby. Yeah, that was way back. 1990. Okay, let's see. Oh, you're interviewing me. I was going to say, what film was it that we first worked on? Fuck. Christy... I Close. Mm, Christy was the last word in the title. It was obviously a PT Vivid film, yeah. A Portrait of Christy. I knew it was something like that, right. You, Peter North, and me on a butcher's block in a restaurant. That's the first one? I thought we did like a boy girl somewhere else at Track Tech or something like that. <laughs> Dude, I love how we're both like, let's see, that was only 30 years ago. That's uh, crazy, right? I know, I know. How fast the time fly? 30 years ago. And I'm only 32. How did that happen? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you related to Dorian Gray? No. Oh, okay. Who is Dorian Gray? You don't know? It sounds familiar, but I, anything I get wrong, I'm blaming on the head cold, so. Really, Dorian Gray is the, the portrait of Dorian Gray about the guy who has a picture and his pictures of himself, but he keeps getting younger until you rip, rip, rip the picture and then he turned into dust because he's oh, so old. I thought that was Benjamin Buttons. Oh, they copied it from <laughs> Dorian Gray, I think. <laughs> no, I, for, I must have been absent that day in school. Really? Wow. Yeah, maybe that whole week or month for all I know. Yeah. Were you bad in school? Or I wasn't a smart student. Like, I barely got away with C's. Only because I was only, I loved school, but I was only interested in school because I liked recess, PE, lunch, and the boys. Oh. You know what I mean? I was a social butterfly. Really? You're popular. I was. Uh-huh. And in ninth grade, because that's when middle school was actually called junior high school, and it was seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. And in ninth grade, I won in the yearbook for best figure. Go figure. Best figure. <laughs> Wearing my dolphin shorts. I love dolphin shorts. <laughs> ah, who doesn't love those dolphin shorts? The girls in my school were wearing those dolphin shorts. <laughs> yes. I used to sit there and like, oh, God, one day I can have one of those dolphin shorts on my face. And you did. Called Christy Canyon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they were great. The uh, white and blue or pink yes. and white. And the panels were opposite. Like front was white, then blue. And then the back other opposite was blue and white. Or, or there were stripes. And they kind of went up a little bit at the hip. Yeah. And made out of that nylon. Soft. Yeah. I just You just wanted to touch the girls. Yes. I remember these girls in my high school. Gina Malden. <laughs> Yeah, Laura, Fucked her. Laura. I didn't know. They didn't give me I any did. pussy. No, I, I did. <laughs> yeah, how was it? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were great shorts. Those were, something about those shorts, like, I don't know, they kind of like just bring in the time zone, you know, like a memory in your, stamp a memory in your head. Like that is the time of the mid 80s. Right, the it early was, to mid '80s, dolphin yeah. shorts, and then it was gone. Gone. But, but you know that that's the time period, and it was such a beautiful time period because I don't know for sure because I wasn't around in the '70s really, you know, seeing girls that much. I was young, too young. But it was at the time, you know, when you see a little bit of ass on the girls. When I'm in school and I'm just going, oh, because I was right. crazy about the girls, right? It just is. It was so nice to see that little bit. Yeah. They were sexy. They were, but yeah, then they just disappeared. Yep, crazy. Just like Shemendifer and Sassoon jeans. Sassoon, meet out Sassoon, yeah. <laughs> so what have you been up to? <gasps> uh, uh, since when? Since we fucked? Oh yeah, right, that's how you <gasps> Can I say the F word? That's like, what, yeah. You I'm so used it. to Sirius fuck, fuck, XM, fuck. where I have a radio show, Channel 415, Sirius XM, but um, I'm so used to, like, we could say anything. Yeah, I think we can. We're not crazy. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Just like we can say fuck. I think we I don't, don't want to abuse it, but no, you know. I know. It just sometimes it comes out. Sometimes it, it comes out. What have I been up to since yeah. you and I made love? Yeah, I mean, like for the last six months to the year. 
What have you been up to? Really, I've been doing, well, I do my Vivid radio show still, which I've been doing, I think it's been about six years now that Vivid has had um, a show on Sirius XM. Before that, I had eight years at Playboy Radio on Sirius XM, then Vivid got the contract, and I just took a week or two off and started right back up there. Um, do all those, con- I still do the conventions, the exoticas. They have had four last year. I travel a little for work, not not like dancing like I did in the day, but a lot of conventions, um, you know, where we do our radio show, Marcy's always with us and sign at the booth. And I always take like the early shift. So if you ever see me at one of the shows, go for their first thing, because I have that demographic of guys that are the early birds by nine, 10 o'clock at night when I'm doing signings, they don't know who Christy Canyon is. Really? Cause I haven't made a film in 20 years. Do you know, like- Over 20 years, right? I think so, actually. Yeah, actually, probably since, like, 1998. Do you see how incredible you look? Do you? Uh, not today, because I really... You know what? I'm not going to knock myself. I I never got into drugs or heavy drinking, and I get lots of facials and massage. I mean, I really try and take care of myself, but today I don't feel as good only because... You know when you have a head cold and you just don't feel yourself? But yeah. thank you for the compliment. I mean, really, it's the truth. Every time I see you, I say, this one is incredible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, the last time we saw each other was at Jim's birthday party. Jim oh, South. and Jim South is the owner of World Modeling, where so many of us got our start. And that he was my first entrance into the adult business in September 1984, fresh out of high school. And thank God I was with him because he was everything to me. He was my father. He was my brother. He was my agent. Like he was my friend. Like he was a good guy. He was a great guy to get into the business with. I mean, now from what I hear with the girls on my radio show, everyone's an agent, but they sign these five-year contracts. And then if you want to get out, you got to pay them a hundred thousand. It was so easy in our day. You didn't sign anything. That was free and beautiful. It was. So gorgeous, yes. Uh, We didn't even have to pay them. (laughs) We didn't have to worry about anything. (laughs) Nothing. Just getting some work, you know. But we all had work. You didn't have to work. Yeah, you had to worry about it. Never. In fact, when I got in in '84, it was the boom of the video age. So it was going from like the Pussycat Theater to VHS and Beta tapes. There weren't enough girls in 84 to fulfill the perverted, fabulous fans' fantasies. So, and it was really Ginger Lynn, Tracy Lords, and myself, and even Amber Lynn a little bit. She was with Reb, the other agent. But they, I mean, then you had the B girls, but we were like, I mean, we would work 29 out of 30 days. I put those names down. Those are the questions I was going to ask you. Those <laughs> girls, those exact girls. Because they, we were the three of that era. Yeah. I, and that's just my humble, not so humble opinion. But we were like the top three. And then you had a lot of great, sexy girls also. Yeah. But we really were like the top three to my wonderful recollection. Yeah, I think so. Those are names that stood out to me, right? They're like household names. I mean, there were names like Gina Valentina, um, Heather Wayne. I mean, there were great girls, but they weren't the Eric, Tracy Lo- Erica, Erica Boyer. Boyer right? Definitely Erica Boyer. She was up there with us, too. She really? was great. You think so? Okay, may, Tracy may have been here. Erica was right under her pussy. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, it was uh, such really? a small margin. Oh, uh, you think so? Yeah. Uh, there was a girl named Danielle that stood out for me. She had a real fat one. Remember her? <laughs> I don't even remember her. Really? So she must have not been anybody. No, she you know, was somebody, but not. How about Candy Evans? I remember the name, but to my recollection, I didn't work with her. Wow. But that happens. There was a, a really cute girl. Uh, Stacy Donovan? She was gorgeous. But I have to say, Stacy Donovan didn't want to be there. You know, there were those mm-hmm. girls. Uh, Kimberly Carson, who I adore. I ended up marrying one of her husbands down the road. Tim Conley? Yeah. <laughs> but Kimberly Carson hated being on set. Like, we'd all get to the set, and they were gorgeous houses in the Encino Hills and Hollywood Hills, and we'd all get there early to get the food and to chit-chat, and, like, Kimberly Carson would be like, when's my scene going to be shot? I want to get out of here. And, like, we'd be like, why? It's so fun. Like, really? you know, we loved being on sets. Even if our scene wasn't for, like, two more hours, we'd all just be there chit-chatting away. I love being on the set. I loved it, too. Oh, it was like, hey. <laughs> Wasn't it the best? It was so, I don't think anybody from the new era will ever understand how 
mysterious. I mean, you had it when it, was, when it was more mysterious. But I was in 89, but still, I got a little taste of, you know, the 80s. But it was so mysterious and so naughty. Well, and when, in 84, it was illegal. Illegal, yeah. So we'd meet at Jim's house across the street was... I forget now, it's a Gelson's, but back then it was enough, maybe Ralph's or something. Yeah, Ralph's and we'd all have to meet there. And then, okay, we'd be like, everyone follow to the next safety spot to make sure we're not being followed. Okay, no one's following us. Let's go to the local. You know, it was like, we had to like really be sly about it because it was illegal. I mean, I was 18. I didn't care. I was making $500 a day. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, which was a fortune in 84 for a Fuck, yeah, right? high school dropout, right? So tell me, how were those girls? You had Tracy, who beat up Jim a little bit, uh, Ginger, and Amber. How was it? You know, Amber I only worked with once. Like I said, she was a Reb girl, Pretty Girls International. Right. And we very, there was one set, Holly Does Hollywood Part 1, by Video Exclusives, where I met Amber. Video, was, uh, of video Exclusives? Mark oh, Carrier. Yeah, Mark Carrier. Right. right, right. right. Um, and Tina Marie, who was a porn star in the day. And I, it's so weird. I have no idea what happened to them, but, um, so I only met Amber once and she seemed nice, but I didn't know her. She had a whole different set of films that she would do. Really? Okay. There was a big rivalry between Jim, Jim and Reb. So it was a rare day when the paths crossed. But Jim owned pretty much all the talent. Right? I'd say about 95% with the exception yeah. of Amber Lynn and Buck, her brother. Yeah, Buck was cool. I never met, I mean, I may have met Buck, but I never worked with him. Whoa. I wasn't on set with him, again, because he was a pretty girl. Wow, that's God, crazy. Not, he wasn't a pretty girl, but he was with yeah. Pretty Girls <laughs> yeah. International. He was all man from what I hear. But um, so I think that that's why we never really crossed paths. So I don't know much about her. Ginger Lynn, to this day, like we talked yesterday, one of my favorite girls, if not my favorite girl in the business. I mean, she's just incredible. She was the first girl that I ever in my life had sex with. Really? And it happened to be on film. How'd you like it? Loved it. Really? How cool is that though? She popped my female cherry. Yeah. What, what year was that? 1984. Wow. I hadn't been with a girl. I'd barely been with any guys before I got into porn. I wasn't wow. like the promiscuous girl. I was the flirtatious girl. But, you know, I was the total tease in school. But I, I slept with maybe six guys before I got in the business. Mm. Wow. I didn't know what doggy was. I didn't know what cowgirl was. I was Are so you naive. I am dead serious. But, but listen, <laughs> let's, we got to face the facts. Today, the, edu the sexual education on the internet is so easy to find. I when know. we were young, like it wasn't there. So we didn't know what the hell was going on. Missionary was normal. I did yeah. doggy, but uh, it wasn't so crazy, <laughs> right? You know, it wasn't so crazy like it is now. Like, Isn't like that it, nuts? You could just flip on the internet and look at, oh, we're going to do that. You could be 10 years old. Here, we're going to try this. Yeah. We're going to try that. It's pretty, so it is strange, but yeah. I was very naive. Like when I got in the business, I was discovered by Greg Rome. Do you remember that name? I heard his name. Greg Back, Rome. Was he a performer? Yes. Yeah. And kind of a, a short buff. He looked like a surfer, kind of like blonde hair, tan, really cute. I have no idea what happened to him. And before I started making films, he's like, now you know what spoon is? I'm like, no. Do you know what dog is? No. You know? And he's <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to have to teach you positions. I'm like, okay, where do we go? So he, do you remember where you grew up? They had these things in Hollywood on Santa Monica Boulevard. And it was like a building and you can rent a jacuzzi room. If anyone remembers those. And they were like I mean, I've kind seen of those before. for creation. And then you got your own jacuzzi. And, right. you know, you could have sex in the jacuzzi. I mean, it's, you in know. 1984, yeah. 1984, I've, yes. I've seen some of those in the hood. <laughs> Actually, it, it was, it, I'd never been, but it was so new and exciting. So he gets us a room at the jacuzzi place. There were probably like 12 different jacuzzis that you could rent out. So we get one, you know, and he lays a towel out on the rock formation, which I'm sure was just plaster rocks. And he taught me all the positions. Okay. Now this is spoon lay on your side, Christy. I'm going to get behind you. It was incredible. That's nice of <laughs> We rented it for two hours and I left a better woman. <laughs> that was real nice of him, I thought, right? <laughs> this is before he took you to, to an agent? No, right after I signed up. Oh, so right he after said, let's I signed go up. practice? Yeah, he's like, you got to learn the porn move, porn, you know, sex moves now. And, and I'm like, like, okay. What's that? <laughs> well, I'll show you. <laughs> He was having a good time, but. So was I, though. Really? That is beautiful. Today, people don't embrace sex. 
they don't appreciate the beauty of it. It's like to have sex is like a crime. Well, it's not a crime at the time, but a year or two later, then they're like, oh, that was a crime. I was forced to do that. Yeah, but where's the beauty? Sex is beautiful. I agree, but it's the whole hashtag me too syndrome. I don't know. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, but they're... I loved it. All I know is I learned more about sex in that fr friggin' jacuzzi room than I had all throughout high school. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah, I bet. I bet that guy had a good time, too. Oh, he did. <laughs> and he got 50 bucks. Finder's fee from, from Jim. Yeah. Remember if you brought a girl to Jim, I think that you got like a $50 finder's fee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just gave him girls, right? At the end, when I had girls, I just gave right. them. Right. But, but so... Ginger's your buddy. She was great. I love her. Yes, she's amazing. I mean, and our lives have been so intertwined for the past 35 years. How scary is that? In the business together. Then, like I said, we were on Playboy Radio for like eight years together. We just, we are like sisters from, you know, different mom and dad. Like, we have such a soul sister connection. We just get each other. Really? And like when we were on radio, she'd look at me and I knew exactly what she wanted to do to our guest. You know, like that kind of thing. I'm like, okay, Ginger's going to fist her. And I'd be like, hey, oh, really? play with my boobs. You know, and as she's like, got her face in my tits. I see Ginger. Go. Like, we just got each other. We were like so connected. We are so connected. Do you know I've never met her? Is that crazy? Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yes, yeah. that is crazy, actually, TT. I thought so. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. I, I was at her house one time in a location, I think 97, 98, I think. But um, that's that's did, crazy. Just like I never worked with Buck, though. Yeah, that's crazy. Too. I don't even know if I I think I've met Buck, but like I didn't. Yeah. I get it, though. It, even though our business is so small, at least in yeah. our era, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, there were still yeah, I never worked with Jerry Butler. I mean, there were you know, there were plenty of people that I never even got to work with. Tracy. That's Tracy, a whole different yeah. story. <laughs> That's the last one. <laughs> Tracy, so. Here's the thing with Tracy. She, she looked very pretty. She was hot. She was hot. She was hot. I mean, that girl was with Ginger. Those were my two favorite girls in totally different ways. Ginger and I were like that playful, sexy partnership together. Whereas Tracy was like... <sighs> Do whatever you want, Tracy. Really? I am your fucking bitch. I can do whatever you want. I, for no shit. her alleged age of 15, 16, uh -huh. she knew more about sex than I may even know at this age and stage of my life. Uh -huh. She was wild, crazy, in charge. She was so in control. I remember in 86, I'd quit the business for a few years. I was watching TV at my condo that I lived and the news flash, oh, the underage porn star. And I'm like... What? Tracy Lords. It's been, and I thought, and that was before TiVo. And I had to wait like 30 minutes for the next, you know, news thing. And I thought, no way that girl, first of all, to my knowledge, no one knew. They really didn't. That was some, mm -hmm. some undercover secret. I don't know what the real story is, but that girl, like, okay. During the, you know, while we weren't sh shooting a sex scene on a set, we'd all be talking, laughing, eating. Tracy would be having sex with the owner of the house and 10 of his friends. She'd be having sex with all the extras that they hired for a film. Like she was so, she had the biggest wow. sexual appetite of all of us combined. Wow. And she was beautiful. That's incredible. All put together. Stunning. Stunning. Yeah. Wow. She was beautiful. She I was fuck, gorgeous. I fucking wish I would have started earlier. <laughs> oh, I had her plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> she was great, though. Like, I really liked her. I mean, I'm sorry that, that, that... Bubbly, right? She wasn't bubbly uh -huh. like Ginger. She was very, like, seductive and, oh, you know, yeah. kind of calm and cool. Like, Roy Karch once, I remember on a set, said, okay, we're having deli for lunch. I'm going to order food. I don't want deli. And I said, yeah, okay, neither do I. She's like, I want Thai food. So everything had to be shit can because she wanted Thai food. And I thought, I would not, like, I'd be like, okay, I'll take deli, even if I didn't want it, because I was always the people pleaser, you know? But so I loved her attitude. She was like, and then she said to me later, I don't really like Thai food. I just didn't want him to think he could get me whatever he wanted. You know, like that wow, kind of a, she's she thinking was already. like so conniving wow. in so many ways. That is insane. At a young age, that's crazy. She's smart. Really crazy. She's pretty smart, you thought? Oh, it's completely smart and very sly and just so conniving. Incredible. She had a game plan. I don't know what it is and we'll probably never know. Uh -huh. But the whole thing, when all was said and done, it was just so weird. I don't know.
I don't know what the true story is. There's different theories, and who cares? Yeah. I didn't get arrested. Yeah, who, yeah. <laughs> I had some fresh young puss. <laughs> was it? Was it a pretty one? Was it pretty? Gorgeous. Pussy was pretty. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Tracy was beautiful, huh? Yes, Tracy Lords. I know you're watching. You were fun to work with, <laughs> <laughs> and I know you weren't drunk like you said in your interviews. That's what got to me was. We all had fun. We maybe dabbled in drugs offset. We were 18. We, well, she was 15. But the business never gave me drugs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I she read, wrote in her book, oh, Jim South gave, well, she Whoa. called him a different name. And I thought, you liar. He was always the guy that said, don't do drugs. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm not very fond of her now, because she lied. And it was everything she wrote wasn't true. We were there on our own free will. No one faked, you know, oh, just stand here and watch. And then there, she wrote just some weird stuff in her book. And that's what I don't like are the liars yeah. because I was there too sweetheart and that was BS Jim South was the best guy in the world the always tell people always. stay away from drugs don't bring drugs here don't right. come yeah I mean he's like an amazing person great person great him. person so that's the only thing she was great when she was 15 then she turned 18 and turned into a bitch <laughs> a bitter bitch really? <laughs> I guess oh really she got a little action in Hollywood right and well, not well, enough, well, but yeah, she got a little notoriety, I'll call it. No, but the movie, she did some mainstream. Yeah, like a few, yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. I mean, not much recently, right, right, but right, anyway, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything personal against her. I just, in, in my life, I own what I've chosen to do. Not only do I own it, but I love it. Christy is a gangster. Love don't it. mess with Chrissy Kim. Because when she says something, she means it. I really do. Yeah. I do. So for someone to do it and then like totally be the victim and oh, no one had a gun to our head. Go get off the set if you don't want to be here. Because for every person that leaves, there's back then 10 more that want to come in. Now there's a thousand more. But no one was forcing us to be there. We could all, you know, leave whenever we wanted to. So I think that that's what just kind of turned me off. I mean, she was great to work with, and she was hot, uh, sexy. She looked hot, right? Like that, the body Ooh, and the, the right, pouts. you tell me the energy is coming uh, from her, right? Hot. Very sexual. But, and the other thing is I always think, okay, if you really didn't like the business, then why didn't you go back to your given name? What was it, Nora Kuzma or something? Why'd you keep Tracy Lords if it was such a bad connotation attached uh -huh. to it? So that's what gets me is when people don't own what they've chosen to do. You know what, I think think the new generation doesn't want to own shit. Really, oh, no, they don't. <laughs> but I'm a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I'm past the boomer, but, you know. I don't know what close. I am. <laughs> so let's go back. You know, I remember when I did this scene, the first scene was just me and you, a boy, girl. Okay. I remember it was in the corner of Track Tech. Ron Bolo had okay. just got that together, I think. I or you think it was me and Peter North? I can't remember. I remember that. I'm pretty sure it's that one scene. Me and you in the very front of Track Tech. I just, it's embedded in my head. It had right? to be for a video exclusives. No, really? Because a portrait of Christie that you and I were in was my first film in 1990 when I signed with Vivid. That was the first film that I shot for them. Oh, really? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, you know what? It could have been a scene in the corner a month later that we did. Maybe. I know that I was nervous. Why? <laughs> just because I just like a youngster, you know what I mean? Even though we're close to the same age, yes. right? I was like, this is Christy Canyon and I'm, I'm like flattered. nobody and I'm a little bit nervous. And uh, yeah. It was, well, uh, it didn't show. Yeah? It okay. didn't show at all. And then... I remember being on the, the Vivid set for sure, I'm pretty sure. And you went, or the, my friend said that you took him in your car, your beautiful, I think it was blue Porsche. Yes. Right, convertible Porsche. Yes. You took him around the corner and you guys talked a little bit. I like the wink. So basically I fucked him in the car? Or, or did I just or blow him? Maybe you just blew him. Something. Who knows? Something, I'm His sure. His name was Joey Berducci. He was looked like me a little bit, maybe a little better looking, right? And same, had a, I think he even had a bigger dick than me, right? Which, you know, my dick's not the biggest you one. You think but... I remember every dick I fucking sucked? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I don't remember his okay. dick. I'm Sorry, Joey. I barely remember. I remember the car, though. <laughs> yeah, that was a beautiful car. <laughs> it was. 
Oh, it, it was. was. Cool, yeah. And you know what's funny is that car I was leasing, that car was originally Elliot Siegel's Porsche convertible. Really? And I leased it from Southwest Leasing, who was like the people that gave cars to everyone in the business. And I guess Elliot Siegel, yeah, didn't pay a couple payments and they took it back. Are you and kidding? I ended up with it, yeah. How much were the payments? Back then, I think probably a thousand a month. Wow, was it a turbo? It was convertible, right? Yeah. It was beautiful. It was like a year old when I leased it. It was great. And then it got yeah. stolen and I got another one and that one caught on fire. Wow. I know. Uh, no, it no, did. I did. I, I put. Because PT the, was next to you, so everything's caught on fire when PT's around. You are so funny. No, I had got. The first one got stolen, the blue one from Elliot Siegel, you know, his, it, his it, repo. Elliot Siegel got me in the business. Is that ironic? Oh, my God. I always liked him. He was. He, he was looked nice. like a gangster. I mean, he was gangster. Yeah. He was. And he used to call me up and ask me out in the early, mid 80s. Yeah. But I never went out with him because, I don't know. The, it I wasn't just that didn't. pretty. You know? He wasn't my type, but, you know. Uh -huh. But I did get his car. So that one got uh, stolen. So then I got another one, and insurance said, okay, we're only going to insure this one if you get a Teletrek. Remember Teletrek that found the car if someone stole it? I remember there was one after that, yeah. Lojack. Lojack, yes. I got the cheap version, which was out then. Tell her, and so I'm driving in my Porsche one day, and all of a sudden, like, I see the back of it on fire. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I threw my cigarette out because I used to smoke, and it flew back in the window. My, the back, and I'm like, wait a minute. I wasn't smoking. The engine's in the back of a Porsche. The whole engine was rewired wrong from the Teletrack, and the whole... <laughs> car just caught on fire and insurance is like well they have to pay for it and and tell the tracks like no insurance has to then i went out on the road dancing and somehow the car got stolen out of my garage when i was out of town <laughs> <laughs> i think statute of limitations has run out <laughs> hey you gotta get your money man yeah. fuck that man. i'm like i'm not i'm going to fuck you know i'm going to canada to dance for a week make sure that car is fucking not in the garage when i get <laughs> don't what? fuck with My christy car? you might disappear <laughs> <laughs> i will times have definitely changed but no anyway that you know no, what that's you a good story i like that <laughs> you know when do you think it was your prime what was your prime time you know I mean, you've been popular for so long, but when was the apex, the top? You know, when I got in in 84 and then I quit in 85, that was my prime in one way. It was the onset, like I said earlier, of the video boom. It was like, oh my God, I have this girl in my living room, this, that, and the other. So that was a prime for one reason, because I got popular so fast. Yeah. There were so few girls in the business. It was the beginning of just this wonderful, wonderful video age going on out there. So that was my prime in one way. Then I quit and I came back and I became a vivid girl. That was a prime in my life in a whole different way. Now I was a vivid girl. And that at the, in its day, now vivid, you know, it's not really what it was at all anymore. But that was another prime because now I was a vivid girl and that was the top of the line. You didn't get any better than being a vivid girl. No. So they were both primes for completely different reasons. Did, so if that makes sense, oh, like yeah, for not sure. one was better than the other. I love the 84, 85 era because we were just these goofy 18 year olds rebelling, having sex every day with different people and new experiences. Not only did I experience a girl on film for the first time, I experienced interracial sex on film for the first time. I experienced- You hear that everybody? Christy was not running, she is down. She wasn't, didn't have any stigma None. about black dick. So everybody has to embrace her and, and did, I'm sure, but I mean, that's even more embracing. And it, I mean, back then it wasn't even like, oh, I need to fuck a black guy, I need to fuck a Hispanic to make sure I'm PC. No, he was fucking beautiful. It, I had no prejudice. I come off of the 70s kind of a parent, you know, who dated Jewish people and black people. And I was that epitome of a 70s child. Mm -hmm. So, and I grew up in LA. We didn't have that. Mm -hmm. um, another first on film, this is why the 80s was so great. Another first on film was two guys and myself. Another first on film was a gangbang of six guys and myself. Oh, really? I mean, 
all of my sex, besides boy you girl. You did a game, I did. Wow. For Evil Angel, six guys and me on a pool table. It was really? amazing. What? That's in the 90s. Then. No. Evil Angel's been around. John Stalliano shot it. Wow. Yeah. Well, here in 85? 1985, I think I shot that. No shit. Called Gangbangs with Christy Canyon. Yeah. That's incredible. I know. Wow. But so that was a prime for me because I was coming into my own sexually. I was figuring out how wonderful sex was when you weren't, you know, just with the guy from high school and you're kind of nervous and... I could just be me on film. I could scream when I came. I could t talk dirty because when you're, I have to legally say 18 and having sex, at least on Vivid Radio, I always have to say 18, but I always say 18 minus two. Um, when you, you know, when you're learning out about sex and you're with a guy from high school and you don't want to be like, yeah, blah, blah, and like just spout off all this, you know, dirty talk because you don't know how he's going to react to, you know, like, what, what's this girl talking about? Why is she so filthy? But like in my head, I'm thinking it as I'm having sex when I'm 18 minus two with a high school guy. But so now I'm on an adult set and no one, there's no judgment. I couldn't, you know, say enough dirty words where someone's going to be yeah. like, what's wrong with you? Or why are you coming so hard or screaming so loud when you come? It was the sexual freedom that I had on set. You were horny. <sighs> Really horny. Really horny. Really horny. Right. And there was just something so freeing about being like barely 18. And part of it was such an F you to the world. Like oh. I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing, which is making it even more fun. People don't know, man. In those days, porno was really naughty. We were not considered cool. We weren't considered elite. We I, were considered... I thought you were cool. I did too. And, and I'm sure most people did, but they'd never admit it. But there was like still a stigma attached oh, to it. Yeah. By the time the 90s came around, porn was very accepted. It was almost touching the mainstream, you know. Little, right? A little, it'll never be completely main. Never it will be. But it was more acceptable. 2000, it really, now it was like uh, nothing. It isn't anything, but it's just, it doesn't have that oomph like we used to have. I loved it when it was underground. Then I loved it when it was still very elite. Yeah, it was beautiful, man. I, I loved it. I feel so lucky to be a part of it. Oh, I agree. I, I agree completely. I but the girls and guys now love it because they weren't around. They probably weren't even born when I was in the business. You know what I mean? So they don't know the difference. To them, it's the best. Thank God. Really? Some people like it, love it still? There's a great agent out there, Mark Spiegler. Right, he's very good. He's, I had him on the show. Oh, I love him. I had one of his girls, I have some of his girls on my Vivid radio show. Those girls are like how we were in the 80s and 90s, just working all the time. Do you, then there's other girls that don't have good representation that can't get work to pay their rent. Yeah. So it's just, if you get with the right crowd now, you're going to have that amazing experience. But there's so many people out there now. I don't think it'll ever be as free as the way we had it, you know? With all the stigma of the Me Too, the STDs, all the, you know, people watching the Instagram and the social media, I don't think it'll ever be as free. But you know what? And it's not just the adult business, TT. The world's never going to be free like never. it was. We were so lucky when we were doing our films the only way to communicate with us was A, if you came to see us at a convention, a bookstore, a dance club, or this little thing that was called snail mail. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd get your P.O. box and that was the only communication. <laughs> it was beautiful because we'd do our films, we'd go on the road, we'd come home and we'd have our other life to deal with. We didn't have to like wake up and go, okay, I got to tweet out that I'm awake. I'm going to take a shower, blah, blah. Take a shit, yeah. Right. Like it was so nice to be able to like cut that off once you were done on the set yes. once you were done at the strip club and then you just go you go to the dog park you go to palm springs for the weekend and you cut that part of your life yeah. off and you were untouchable i mean you know what i mean you're, you're right untouchable, you know? right you were i was you know it's like it's, it's not the same. it was beautiful so, it was yeah. so that's the thing the world isn't uh, free anymore there's the bickering on the social media and the, oh god yeah. Hatred. I mean, like like I always say, and you know yeah. it too, familiarity breeds contempt. contempt. So, yes, so true. And it breaks your heart because yeah. I, I don't want to ruin the show, but you see the, the little phone seems like a contemptuous machine. 
You know, and it wants to break everybody's heart, break them down. It seems like. But our lives, and I include myself now, it's all on your phone. Yeah, it's crazy. And they own us. The I phone know. owns us. Like I used to bring photos in in 2000 when Vivid started my website, Christy Canyon. I would bring hard photos, like developed at the store photos to Vivid. They'd scan them, put them on the internet. I mean, it was like a whole process. Now you're like one click away with your phone and yeah. it's uploaded onto the site. I mean, that's, it's like, if you think about it, it's really insanely incredible from the way we grew up to scan and throw it up and be there like that quick. It just, it's hard to believe. It's, it's beautiful, really. It's, it's unbelievable, the technology. I know, it's right. crazy. It's How really lucky are we, though? We've got to live through all of it. Oh, yeah. I, I and you just got to go with the flow. You can't yeah. stop the clock. You can't turn it back. Oh, Life yeah. rolls on, and we're doing okay, yeah. aren't we, TT? Exactly, because nobody <laughs> gives a shit yeah. if we care, really. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. I'm so, not here to change the world. Huh. So 84, 85, you quit? Uh, 84? Or when? Yes. Why? I was burned out. Really? I worked every day for seven months. Maybe, I lie, maybe 29 days out of the month, really? I worked every day. Now, some days were magazine shoots. Some days may have been a box cover because that's the day, the era, the decade, the century where they took a day to shoot a box cover yeah. with Ron Vogel. Alexis did makeup most of the time, his daughter. And they really put a lot of time and money into the box covers. I mean, it was beautiful. So when I say I worked 29 days out of the month, it wasn't always sex, but it was something to do in the business. Maybe I did a bookstore signing or the convention that what was then called the uh, CES show, you know, or the VSDA show or in Chicago. Sahara. Right. So, but- and We turned into the Venetian. I know. Uh, Hard Rock now. Oh. It's been at the Hard Rock for the last oh, no, 10 but, years. But uh, Sahara turned into the Venetian, Oh, right? did it? Okay. I, I can't keep uh, up with all those. That's but not yeah. <laughs> But um, I know it changes so fast. But so I think after like eight months, nine months, I was just burned out, TT. And I was dating someone that oh. owned video. Uh, no, who did they own? They owned uh, Michael that owned Paradise Visuals. I heard of that name even oh, when I was a kid. Was you know what I mean? Great. They were one of the best companies. You know who used to pack video boxes for shipment? Um, Mark and his brother, Stone, Mark Stone. Mark Stone, he passed. The other one too, Gary Stone. Uh, they used to be shippers really? for Paradise Visuals in 1984. That's oh, where their start really? was. Youngsters, so you must, they're like young. I've they're, known them since I was 18. Yeah. How crazy is and, that? And then he started Moonlight. Yep. yep. But they started out as shippers, always nice guys. Um, but nice anyway, guys. and so, but I was in love. And What was the guy's name? Michael. Paulson. Paulson, uh, wait. He's probably gone by the time we got on. Oh, totally gone. He made millions. Really? Like so many people did in the 80s. Now, some were smart and saved it like he did. Um, he bought property. He's one of the, the you know, and really? then wow. uh, I hear he's in Florida. I don't even know, but he was a good guy. But, you know, we eventually. Mob? What? Was he mob? I don't think so. No, he's a regular guy? I think so. Nice Jewish guy. Uh, but it didn't work out. And I, at the, and then I started working at my dad's office for a few years. So I quit the business a few months later. And then I worked for my dad and a few months after I quit, Michael and I ended up breaking up. I wasn't ready for a relay. I was 18, not even 19 yet. I quit in April. I turned 19 in June. I was at this stage in my life, TT, where I was kind of messed up in the head. Like, not that I was ever abused as a kid. I never had anyone touch me, anyone hit me, nothing. I have no abuse stories at all, but just life. Being 18 or being, you know, young and the mom, dad, both divorced three times each, moved a lot, but that's life. I don't begrudge anyone. That's not why I got in the business, but I knew that I needed to just kind of get my head together so I wouldn't be a victim. So I knew that Michael wasn't the guy because I was still looking at him to be my dad, to be, you know, this, to be... I, it wasn't a healthy relationship because I wasn't mature enough to have one, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I went to therapy. 18, yeah. 18 and just a total F up. And, oh yeah, really? <laughs> not and. in a bad way, not drugs or anything, just I was so unselfish-assured. Believe it or not, I had no self-confidence. Yeah. I didn't know who I was at 18. I mean, I knew that I was an okay person. I loved what I was doing, but... I just had to like tweak my brain a little bit and get to a healthy place in, in my brain. It makes you, you know, so, cause I always want to know these things. You know, you just, you're, you led me 
to the hole I want to go to, so I want to go down that road, is when you're younger, you know what I mean? How, when <laughs> did you see your body develop into these giant cannonballs, and you, you know what I mean? And you know, the shape, you know, when, when was it? Right about fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yeah, in fourth grade over the summer, they started to grow, and by fifth grade, I had hooters, and yeah. no other girl did. <clears throat> I went to, you know, a public elementary school, and in fifth grade, I was wearing this, you know, it was in the 70s. I was wearing a little, like, airbrushed tank top with, like, a fox on it. And the, a fox's eyes were, like, these red rubies. And underneath it said, Foxy Lady. <laughs> it was so I remember sad. stuff like that. <laughs> Foxy was a big, I mean, Jimi Hendrix made that song. Foxy Lady. And the, the fox was, like, real sexy looking. You know, the tail was kind of turned up. And the principal called me into the office when I was in fifth grade. And I, and I wasn't wearing a bra. And I did. I had big boobies. I don't know the size. Eyes, but they were, you know, big. And he said, um, Christy, you can't wear tank tops anymore. And I said, why? What the and fuck? he said, you know, you've developed a lot more than the other. <laughs> <laughs> Making the hand. You know, <laughs> <laughs> was he excited or what was he doing? <laughs> no, I he think was, he was kind of confused. Yeah. And, um, and I started crying and I called my mom from a pay phone at school. And I'm like, hey, Mr. Vradenberg won't let me wear tank tops. And she came down there in her orange VW van and pulls up with her perm. She had the big perm in the 70s. And she's like, you Apple can't. perm or? I mean, she actually curls. got a perm at the uh, salon. Remember when women used to get the curls? Kind of, yeah. It was called a perm. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they put the curlers in and a solution for two hours and it stunk bad for uh, oh, yeah, I remember. the perm. Kind of, yeah. Permanent, they were called. Anyway, and she gets out and, you know, she comes storming and you can't discriminate against my daughter. Why? That's not fair. She can't wear. So, you know, of course, she had her ways. And he's like, okay, she can wear them, but you got to get her a bra. Oh, because they're big. Uh, but nobody's messed with you, right? No, but she took me to JC Penny. <laughs> I got my first bra. <laughs> Are they size D already? No, I think it's good C, though. Good C. A good C in fifth grade. And um, then uh, the tank tops kept going, though. Couldn't stop. And the shorts got a little shorter. After. Uh, and that was when I realized the power of... Like kind of a cute little sexy body. Yeah, that's what I wonder. Like, when did, how old were you start noticing that? Sixth, seventh grade? Yeah, like, that's when I realized, you know, that you get people's attention. What'd you do? It's like... I'd like, you know, walk around, sticking the <laughs> chest out, standing up straight. And everybody's like... I mean, what, how were the heads breaking, the necks breaking? I think so. It was just, it was, I realized the power of the body at fun? sixth grade. Oh my God, so much fun. <laughs> and I was such a tease. Like I never abused it. I wasn't like, yeah, by 12, I was doing gangbangs in the bathroom. I wasn't like that at all. But it was just fun to have that power. I was a total P-R-I-C-K-T's. Do you know what I mean? Really? Like I'd totally flirt with the guys and I'd bring like little pencils from around the house that I'd find. And I'd be like, you Bart, do you want to buy a pencil? And I'd get all the boys lunch money. Really? They'd pay me 50 cents for these little stubby nothing pencils. You know, Please, you, I think you should buy these pencils. Da, da, da. And they would. I'd come home with like $5. Wow, that is cool. Which in 1974 you know, was a lot of money or whatever. You know what I mean. But yeah. 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 19, yeah, 76, 74, yeah. I mean, I definitely used it to my advantage. Wow. So when did you start maybe noticing your pussy was wet? When was that? Probably about 13. 13? When I was, you know, first, like, kind of, you know, in bed at night, would explore my own body and touch things. and. So you're pretty average age. Yeah, yeah. You weren't twisted. Were no. You? I, you know what would be fun if I could remember what I was thinking at yeah. nine o'clock at night when I had to go to bed and I, you know, <laughs> start. God only knows what went through my mind back then. Really? I mean, because you said you were so horny at 16 thinking naughty names and things. So at 13, you were mellow, but by 16, you started getting kind of yeah. dirty, or you might say. Yeah, but I never did it with my boyfriend because I didn't know what his reaction was going to be. Because yeah. it's not like I was 16 and he was 30. He was 16 also. Like, I didn't know what he would think if I called out, you know, F me harder. Or, you know, like, so it was just all in my head. I'm like, yeah. deeper, harder, so, faster. Really? So by 13, you were just normal, you think? Totally. Something I think. happened from 13 to 16. 
I think just, you know, I remember seeing a movie too with my mom, Shampoo, with Warren Beatty. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, of course. It was rated R, and I was like 13. I think this is where it all started. And my mom really wanted to see it. Yeah, he was like a hairstylist or something. I think so, and he was screwing he was Tuesday him. Weld in the scene that I remember. And my mom couldn't get a babysitter, and she really wanted to see this movie. And she's like, girls, come on, my sister and I. We're going to go see the movie. So there we are, 13. I, I was 13. She was 15. And we're watching Shampoo. And there was this one scene that, like, it's so like I saw it yesterday, where Warren Beatty's having sex on the kitchen floor with Tuesday Weld, and the refrigerator door is open. And it was almost black and white. But you see the light coming from the refrigerator, and it's shining on Tuesday and Warren Beatty on the ground having sex. And then I think Warren Beatty's girlfriend walks in. But that snippet of how sexy it was, and there I was 13 and seeing this beautiful man's body like grinding on top of a girl. Obviously it was R-rated, it wasn't an X-rated film, but I knew what they were doing. I mean, I knew that they were having sex. And I think that that was like that night that I went home and thought, that was really hot. That was sexy to watch. Like yeah. two, you and know. You started getting warm yeah. down there or something? Yeah, and I, you know, kind of like, ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna close That's my cool. eyes and you know. That's a pretty normal age. Yeah. That's pretty like totally normal. And yet it wasn't like a creepy thing. It was sexy. Yeah. It was sexy. People don't know from what I remember, they weren't hardly showing anything in the movies. No, nothing. Right. Right? I, I think we saw his, his rear, his, you know, his ASS in the movie. And like every time he'd like thrust into Tuesday Weld, like the, the muscles on the cheeks yeah. would tighten. And there was something so erotic well, about that. So that was yeah. memorable. I know. Kind of makes me want to like, you know, check out Netflix and see if it's on there. I haven't seen it in, I don't know, 40 years. <laughs> really? Yeah. The first movie I saw that I remember in my head that made me like, whoa, was Saturday Night Fever. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Right? I mean, they were fucking in the back car, right? I remember oh, that. See? See? see some tits a little bit, I think. Yeah. And oh, the like, sounds, oh. the grunting yeah. and the, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I can imagine that that was... So innocent. So innocent. And I it's know. like nothing, but today it's nothing. But wow, right? It was so much back then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how was, um, what was your economic status when you were growing up? Very middle class. Yeah. You know, a good solid middle class. Mm -hmm. Then my mom married her third husband. He was the, the president of Warner Brothers Music. Wow, really? So we went from a good solid middle class to an upper class. Was she beautiful like you? She was so cute. Uh, gorgeous. My mom was beautiful and fun and this wonderful energetic personality and wow. very, very much like a 70s free love. Not that she had different guys coming over. She was a great mom. She wasn't like, you know, oh, this is your Uncle John and this is Uncle Bob. You know, she wasn't one of those. There, she, did. she had boyfriends, I'm sure, stay over when my sister and I would go to my dad's house. But, you know, it wasn't a revolving door. She was an amazing mom. Did she influence you more than your father? Because you were so bubbly. You know, he's strict, you know? Absolutely. My dad's Armenian. And he was, um, you know, he wasn't as fun. You know, he's that Armenian thinking, sorry, nothing against Armenians. Right, right. Like we, my sister and I had to wear like polyester little outfits around him. You know, his wife would pick us out clothes for when we'd go to brunches and we'd have to wear like polyester pants with the matching blazer and that little silk shirt that went to the neck. Do you know, like he was definitely that... Um, Proper. Yeah, and not as school. fun. Right. Yeah, that's like the... Um, Total old school, absolutely. Almost like a New York mentality, those very strict... <clears throat> yes, right. Is he from, where was he, from Armenia or from New York? My ancestry was in the genocide in Armenia and oh. fled to Turkey. Okay. And then, you know, eventually made it to the United States. But no, he, he had that old school mentality. And your mom is... Hodgepodge. I mean, I finally did my DNA. She always said that we were oh, half yeah. Italian, half Armenian. Not one drop of Italian in us. A lot of Greek. Really? So pretty much Greek and Armenian. And if, something called West Asia, which is like a, some kind of Middle Eastern. But that, that's a kind of it. Greek and Armenian is pretty much it. Huh. Maybe a little French, if I recall. I don't know. I took it three years ago. I can't remember. All right. When was your first kiss? A guy named Kenny from middle school. I think I was in seventh or maybe eighth grade. So that's 
12, 13, or yeah. 13, 14. Yeah. So right around the same time you saw Warren Beatty? Yeah, that's when it was kind of all just, you know, ooh, I'm getting to know myself a little bit. And I was I'm on a waterbed. I love waterbed. I They're love cool. My you know, waterbed. You know, when I'm younger, if you can get the girl on the waterbed, like, this is cool. It's it's a ball rolling. Yeah, it was it was a, called a super single. Oh, yeah? I still remember. And I loved it. It was so great. And I remember kissing him on my waterbed really? in my little pink room. I got some action in my waterbed. I did down the road, yes. Kiss. But he just, Kenny just got kissed in it. Just a kiss? And just was kissed. It, it, was it? Maybe a little booby touching. Well, how did it make you feel? Did it, like, warm you up or, you know, anything? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I did. But then I could hear like, you know, I think my mom was out of town and I think the babysitter, like I heard the front door open. Oh, you scared? Yeah. Like, Do you like kissing? Love kissing. Yeah. Kissing is so important. Yeah, I, I love kissing. I think when I see movies and the way they kiss on in regular yeah. Hollywood movies, they go like this. I know. Side angle. It's like porn sex. Yeah, like, like what is Angling it what to is, the camera. What is going on? I hear in porn movies, they don't want to kiss too much. Or they kiss and it's like the tongue's way out. You yeah. know what I mean? You can't lip lock because the viewer yeah. rightfully has the, you know, they want to see the action. I, I bring it up all the time on the show. I love kissing. I love the grinding of yes. the lips, the grinding of the tongue, together the heat. The, it's hard to find somebody to be on your same synchronicity, yes. we might say, or same harmony or whatever you want to say, same level. But when you do, wow. It is great. I know. I agree. I think kissing is, it's such a connection just as much as actual sex and intercourse. Yeah. I think but, kissing is so, like, I've been with guys that they're okay. They're fun. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to do them, but I want to kiss them not because... I have a problem with kissing somebody just because they, their face kind of grosses me out or they have bad breath or, you know, something like that. Uh, uh, kissing is more intimate than sticking their wiener in me. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it clean. That's all right. You <laughs> talk a little nasty. But you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. Or in Armenian, it's juge. Yeah. Juge. juge. My dad only taught us the I'm bad gonna words. I'm going to say that to some, hey, juge. When I see the guy is Armenian guy, hey, juge. Yeah, say all it. Right? Yeah, and, you, you and juge. zog for a girl. Yeah. Zog for a girl, which means whole. Yeah. But that's like <laughs> our dad taught us those kinds of words. Well, that's cool. How was he? You know, it sounds exciting to me. I like shit talking. It's yeah. kind of fun. It, well, you know what it was? Because he'd be like, oh, look at that, you know, Badugi, Sev, Joe, you know. And we knew, my sister and I knew uh, what he was saying, but nobody else probably did. Like a truck driver talking shit. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did he do? My dad and my mom both accountants. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're good at math. Mm. No, I'm not that great at math per oh, se. Okay. I'm really and trigonometry and all that. No way, geometry. I never got it. Like I went to college when I was well. Let's say it was in 1990 when I became a vivid girl. I signed up at the Fashion Institute, and I got all A's except math. I got a C. Wow. I never, for some reason, math was never my subject. Oh, that's never. I know. Considering, well, wow. I know. What are you gonna so, do? But you know what? I still got through life without being well, good at math. You got money. I still got through life okay. So, I, you know, now when you need a calculator, you pull out the phone, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so 13, 14, you're kissing. When did you first give oral? <sighs> Probably 15. 15? To my boyfriend. Yeah. A guy from Thailand. Loved him. Wow, Loved him. a guy from Thailand? Yeah. Wow, that's trippy. A good-looking Thai yeah. guy. Thai, wow. Yeah. Because generally I was always thinking those Thai Asian guys are not on point as, you know. He was good, and that's all endowment. I knew. Endowment. Who knew at that my age? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, how big was it? God, probably five or six. But back then it was huge. Yeah. I had never been with one. And you know what's funny is months later, years later, when I got in the business, I realized as I'm, you know, on the porn set and I'm like sucking some guy or get, I'm like, what's all this extra skin? Oh, oh Toy had this extra skin. Like, I didn't even realize when I was with my boyfriend at that age, so, he was uncircumcised because to me, that was all I knew. So why did you like this guy? You know, Ty seems kind of different. Was he handsome or what was it? 
he was very quiet and shy, which was good because I was outgoing. He was the richest kid at the private school that I went oh, to. Cool. Um, he had a TR8 convertible. Remember those? There was the TR7 oh. convertible. Yeah, I then it, that the one. upgraded version was a TR8, little two seat convertible. He was just cool. You know what I mean? He was cool. I, I don't know what the situation was. He lived with two white gay guys in a gorgeous, huge house in like old Pasadena with like four other Thai guys. We might, we never understood what it was, wow. but no one cared. I, we don't know if like the family, maybe they were dealing in Thai weed or whatever, Thai stick, whatever that was like called, like in or Thai hoarding. sex trafficking. Maybe. We have no idea. It was like, oh yeah, Toy lives with these two old gay white guys, but no one cared. It was like I said, the eighties, yeah, like who gives a fuck? no one cared. No one asked. My mom was like, okay, have fun. Be home by midnight or you're punished. That's, a, that's an interesting. Yeah, we never to this day we never knew, you know, what that actual setup was. Why this these two, you know, lovers had all these Thai kids. He was older then, since he had a car. We never knew Toy's age either. We think he flunked a few grades. We who knows? I don't wow. think he was. I don't think he was seventeen. Is he like Johnny Depp, undercover? No, he wasn't that. <laughs> trust me. Right, Twenty One Jump Street, or what? Yeah. Was it? yeah. No. I have no idea what his story was. And, of course, lost track with him many, many, oh, many yeah. decades oh, ago. True. So, But good you, memories with him. Yeah, did you have sex with him? That was my first, yes. Oh. And he was good. We dated for six months, and then I finally put out. Like, oh, put oh. out all the way. We'd fool around, and we'd oh. do this and that. But then I finally, after six months of dating, gave it up. And then a year later, got into porn. He must have been like, dang, that cost me a lot of Thai food dinners. I finally got it, but... I like chicken cashew. Oh, that pod thai is my favorite. Yeah. Have you been to Thailand? No. Shame on you. I know, I know. Beautiful place. So, I was just got back from the Philippines just a week it's ago. It's gorgeous. Yeah, but Thailand's next door. Yeah, very pretty over there. So, that's a trip. So, you said you were with six guys before you got into business. So, from the... What's his name again? Toy, Toy was like almost 16. You know, uh -huh. I was 16. And then we dated for like six or eight more months. Uh -huh. And then we broke up. And then um, and then I eventually just started, you know, dating, you know, other people. Uh -huh. You know, like my 11th grade prom date, my 12th grade prom. Like then, then I, you know, I tasted a few other dicks out there. <laughs> Because you wanted to? Yeah. A lot? I mean, you were like, I need to try some more? Yeah. And then, okay, you know what? So throughout high school, I think I was with three guys. Then after high school, before I got into porn a couple months later, I was that girl that would go to Hollywood with my girlfriends and dance at clubs. Like, there was one called Seven Seas. And we'd go to the clubs, Odyssey. Oh, yeah, and it was like, you know, we'd go home with guys. I totally did that. I mean, but not with many, maybe three or four guys, you know. The guys were just, because you were doing your thing. You knew what the fuck you were doing already, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of knew what I was doing. I had no idea really what I was doing when I got into porn. Then I realized, okay, this is how you, you can actually put a dick between the tits. Like, I don't think I'd ever done that before porn. Uh, it was really very vanilla before porn for me. Very vanilla, very missionary, very. So, basically... Before the business, you were not with a guy like me because when I was younger, I would get the girl to my house and probably like 12 to 9, I would be smashing her into the bed for nine hours. I mean, <laughs> I was not with a guy like you. No. Not till I met Greg Rome and he took me uh, to the, the, the water, uh, the water slide bar. Places. <laughs> yeah. For that two hourly room rate. Isn't that funny? No, I really. I, huh. How long Wasn't did that promiscuous until I got into porn? But even when I got into porn in 84 till 85, I still wasn't that promiscuous because I worked every day. The last thing I wanted to do after two sex scenes was go out and, you know, drink or party into a club. And because I had to be on set at eight the next morning. And if nothing else, I have always been a professional. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I, I used to like do three, four, five scenes a day, you know? And then I would go out, find some girls, you know, then go to a girlfriend and then go to work. I'd always be on time. But yeah. No, we were so professional in our day. There was no, oh, I caught a cold or, oh, and I know on my radio show, I have like a 20% cancellation at the last minute. 
you know, one of those kinds of girls. And, and that has never been me. I've always been, even today, I'm like, I have a cold, but I'm not canceling on TT boy. I'll, you know, like you do it, you get through it somehow. Thank and you. I want to be here. No. So that was never, I, but that's why I didn't, I think I was in the business for four months working all the time before I finally had sex outside of a porn set. Oh, okay. And it was the manager of a club at the Beverly Center back in the day, voila. Do you remember that club? Were you here in that 84? It was like underground where they park cars. And there was like a little club called Voila. Wow. And the doorman was so cute, you know, and I'd wear my Muscles, white, all that stuff. yeah, and I'd wear my white mini skirt, leather, oh, and yeah, high, nice. high heels, you know, this oh. had, probably had come on me from the scene that day. <laughs> but I remember like bringing them back to my place and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to have sex, you know, outside of a film. But my head was so still in the films. I wore my heels in bed. I'm like, he's like doing me. My legs are spread open. Wow. And at one point he's like, Christy, why are your legs so spread open? And why are you wearing high heels in bed? Really? And I'm like, oh, I, cause I felt like I was wow. on a porn set. Cause I was so conditioned for four months to have sex in front of a camera. Really? That's a trip. So it kind of like, I forgot how you have sex without a camera being around. Yeah, for me, you know, it's kind of similar, but I would get home with my girlfriend and she wanted to turn the lights on, keep the lights on. I didn't want them on. I want to turn them off. You know, like I see the lights all day, people up my ass. I'd be like, no lights. And she'd be like, I want the lights on. <laughs> I want to see how you're, you know, what to me. Oh my, it's so funny how when you have sex in front of a camera for so many years or months at the time, and then you have sex in your personal life, you're, it's, it's so different. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it's say it's, did the guy know you were Christy Canyon? Yes. Huh? Yes. He's like, I'm fucking not. Christy. I mean, because, you know, being a porno star for me, being a female porno star and a guy porno star, I don't like guys, you know what I mean? But, you know, I had some people, I said, oh, they're cool as fuck. I was fans of porno, right? You know, I was a big fan. I thought it was so cool, right? So if I would have got to be with a porno star like you, right. with Ginger Lynn, you know, I'd have been like, oh, I mean, crazy, right? I'd have been like, oh, it was, I was yes. with these girls, this girl, you know? It was so fun. And then when I quit in 85 till 89 when I got back, I had a roommate and we would go with Ron Jeremy to the comedy store every weekend, Friday and Saturday. And I wasn't even 21, but because I was Christy and I was with Ron Jeremy, we You weren't 21? Line. You had to be no, 21. No, no. Oh, before. I quit, right. Because I quit the business before I was 18. I got in at 18, quit right before I turned 19 so for four So it had years. to be 86, maybe. I guess so. So 84, I was yeah. 18. Yeah, because before you were 19, 20, Yeah, so, so yes. within that few years but we would get drunk, you know, on Long Island iced teas. And I, I must have had sex with at least 70% of the comedians at the comedy store. Really? How funny is that? Like, I was a total chuckle fucker. Like, I, if they were a comedian, I got Really? I, I know. love it. So that's what that's I- That's how I got some pussy when I'm younger. I, I was <laughs> talking. How funny is that? And yeah, I, Sam, started with Sam Kinison. You fucked Sam Kinison? Yes. How was he? Amazing. He was? Yes. Wow. He was kind of thick too, right? Oh, he was a big boy. And, and, he and could, Ron Jeremy introduced. And he could put it down? Yeah, he could. Wow, that's great. He could. Big, had a big one or just average? Average. Average. Had to do, you know, kind of cowgirl. Uh-huh. Oh, I got you. Right. He had a belly a little bit. A little. But he could, but, but he could go. But it was so fun. Wow. Yeah, he was great. And was then funny, yeah. He was so fun. And then, you know, the... God, they're all dead. I sound so old, like Robin Williams. And so you had sex with Robin Williams? Like oh, I went through yeah. the gap. <laughs> <Really? laughs> wow. I was like every Because he was weekend. so young, Mark. Yes. Did you, because it's Mark versus Christy? It was, and my roommate. My I had a roommate, not in porn, huh? but we were like the Three total women? hoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so hot. Wow. Well, how was Robin? Great. Huh. He had allergies, I'll put it that way. Oh, yeah? Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but who cares? It was the 80s. He's a you know? beautiful person. He beautiful, seems, beautiful. Yeah. He seems so... But we had so much fun. So when I quit the business in 85, that's when I thought, oh my God, I love sex. I don't have the camera anymore, but 
that's when I didn't go crazy when I was 16 or, you know, 17, not even right at 18 except for porn. But it was like kind of at 19 where I just, I became crazy? a hoe. Really? Yeah. God bless you because that's freedom. Yes, and I so, owned it, and I loved it. You owned it. You love it. Yeah, you're not shy. You're, you're not a hypocrite. Right. No, no. Yeah. You're a real person. And Andrew Dice Clay, if you must know. Oh, yeah! All right, all right. Paul Sorry. Rodriguez. Sorry. There were a bunch of them. Sorry. All right, Christy. For me, I need to know, how big was he? He was good. He fucked my roommate with me in the room. He fucked my roommate, not me. But I was there. Oh, I helped. Okay. Uh, how big did it look? Do you see it? No, it was a good one. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. But isn't that funny? And so we were like the total, you know, and then after all the great ones, then I'd be like, okay, he's kind of on the B level, but he's still hot. I'll fuck him. Really? Wow, that is insane. We had so much fun. That I was the crazy. total, like, we were the, it was so much fun with my roommate, Karen. Really? Was, she, was she hot too? She was hot too. Not as hot as you? In a different way. Different she one? was a redhead, but we were a good team. We were a great team together. Really? I used to have a buddy. His name was Larry. For fuck some, him. No, for, no, fuck no. But for some reason, when we went out, it just was great chemistry, right? We could just get right. the girls. Like, it was just like a, uh, like, I don't know. It's just like, no matter where we were, we could pull the girls. But I had, go out with some other friends, it would never work. Isn't that fun? Yeah. That's how I was with her. And then, and you know what I liked about comedians? I like people that make me laugh. Like, that's one of the reasons I love Ron <laughs> Jeremy. But he always makes me laugh. Like, he's got a great personality. So it didn't really matter what they looked like. It's if you made me laugh while you were on stage, I suddenly got attracted to you. Yeah. So then one night, Louis Anderson's on stage. Oh, Louis Anderson. You're right. He's not so handsome, huh? But I'm like, I want to fuck him. Wow. And the manager of the wow. comedy store is like, you're barking up the wrong tree, Christy. I don't know what he meant by that, but I thought, okay, I guess really? I'm not his type. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, he's like, you, yeah, you could stay wow. away from that one. Yeah, wow, yeah. That's a I don't story. think you'll get very far with him. But I would have fucked him because he was so fucking funny. Yeah. Like, I was into him because he made me laugh at being in the little audience there. Oh, man. You know, I used to get so much pussy because I used to make the girls laugh. I'm telling you, guys out there watching us on TT Boy Show, make the girls laugh and you'll get what you want. I had, I had sex with probably 150 girls before I got into business, right? And How I was old were you when you got in? 20. 20, okay. 21, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just so, I, I wasn't the funniest guy, but once I talked to a girl, I had a lot right. of energy and I started making her laugh and I was just like, I love you anyway. So, you know, what I mean? please you know, let so me love you yes. more. You know what I mean? So I do. I, whatever I could do to make the girl laugh, I was just, you know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Whatever, you know what I mean? It's and so then, true. Yeah, it's pretty trippy. Like, it's like a magnet, you know. Pretty soon after a little while they're laughing, the panties are off. And then if you happen to be good at sex on top of making us oh. laugh. Oh, yeah. Then the girls would tell their friends that I yeah. laid, it, laid it down for hours, you know. Uh, I know. I know. But so that is a tr any other comedians that stand out? No. Okay. They were kind of, you know, we went for the top of the line back in the day. That's beautiful though. Yeah. Robin Williams, that's a great one. He was. Yeah, he seemed soft. He seemed like a soft person. A wounded soul. Yeah? He was. Yeah. And he seemed like that to us. Trying to repair himself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, trying to so, get the yeah. love for something, right? It yeah. was great though. Yeah. Too bad we didn't have cell phones back then. Because we used to always say, people aren't going to believe us. Like, really? he's in our house. He's with us. Wow. I know. Now we'd be, like, <laughs> taking our selfies. Any rockers that you <laughs> chilled with? Slash. Slash? Right. Was he good? Y yeah. yeah. He was great. Right. Because the band was messing with him, right? After me, yeah. After you? Yeah. He was great. Yeah. What a nice guy. You put and, it down? Oh, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, that goes. Big. So he put it down. He's big. Yeah. He was so great, though. He was great, and he was just—he was a nice guy. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, he was very nice. Very. Yeah, I heard that from a couple of people. He was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, he was just really a really cool. like we were at Dan Tana's one night for dinner, uh -huh. and he some drunk lady came up to him. I don't remember all the details. We were sitting in a booth, and some drunk lady came up to him, and she's like was starting to get like that slurry, you did it. She was mad at something that he did. I don't know, maybe he smashed a guitar on set, whatever it was. I can't believe you. 
And he said, I'm sorry, ma'am, if you look at me that way, but it's it's just an act on stage. You know, like, he wasn't mean. He wasn't like, fuck you. He was like, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but, you know, that's just my on stage persona or whatever. And I just remember thinking, what a cool guy. Wow. Fucked him in a movie Incredible. theater. You did? Yeah. What theater? Something in like Granada, no, like Woodland Hills. Regular uh, yeah. AMC or something? Yeah. No one was there. We were in the back oh, row. I was wearing really? a purple dress. 1990, 91? It had to be 1990, 91, yeah. 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 At his height of Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Right? Met him through Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy has had given me some of my most amazing hookups. Ron Jeremy is cool. Yeah, I, I know. I call him and be like, hey, I want to have sex with so and so. He'd be like, okay, Christy, give me a day. And then, you know. Wow. And then once in a while he'd call me and he'd be like, okay, so and so wants to meet you. I'd be like, okay. And I'd really? end up having sex with him. Really? Them. I mean, how cool are you? <laughs> that is the fucking coolest chick I've ever known. <laughs> but I only had sex with them because I wanted to. Yeah. You know, there was like a director. That was like, he's like, oh, John really wants to, John Frank and Armory really wants to oh, meet yeah, you. I met that guy. He was great. And he was cool. He was so cool. Like Ron used to say, oh, he'll put you in movies. I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to be an actress. Yeah. I never wanted to cross over into mainstream. You never did any mainstream. No. I can't act my way out of a paper bag. I mean, they used to have to tape the lines on like Peter North's forehead on post-its. I'm like... So you want to fuck me? <laughs> really? Well, oh, I was such a bad actress. Wow. Yeah. I was like, oh, can we just get to, I would have been a great gonzo girl. Really? Not getting choked out and spit on, yeah. but I would have been great. Just let's get to the sex. Like the dialogue was like, what's that word? Like there was a word PT had me use once. I was writhing on the floor. I'm like, what is writhing even? Who uses that word? What does it mean? Really? He's like, well, it means like you're moving. So when he went to camera, I said the line, so when I was moving on the floor and PT's like, cut, the word's <laughs> writhing. I'm like, I'm not saying writhing, PT. Should we call Steve? <laughs> I'm saying really? moving. So I don't do writhing. I don't mean to be, but by that point, he and I were so bored working with each other. Really? We worked together in the eighties in front of the camera. Yeah, because I want to go through all those people. How was he? Fine. It's fucking him. Yeah. There's no fucking, you know, no. T.T. Boy or Peter North. No. He was okay. Let's say that again, because I like to hear oh. that. <clears throat> there was, it wasn't like fucking T.T. Boy or Peter North. Ah! Or even like a tone, like, there were guys like you, Peter, Tony Tedeschi, um, Stephen St. Croix, Mark Davis. That was like the top tier for me. Mm -hmm. You guys were. There were like, you know, eight, ten of the top tier guys. P.T. was on that second tier. He was always but a he little was too earlier, but on that it would have been on that second tier. Yeah, you know, I love PT as a person. Mm -hmm. Sexually, it wasn't. He was always so as the word like astroterical or like he was so like when the wind was blowing, I felt it. You know what I mean? So like because uh, he was in Jesus Christ Superstar, he was such a performer, and that wasn't and isn't me. The dramatic. Dramatic. Yeah, and it was like, get your dick out. Come on, we got a scene to do. Like, it, it, really? wow. like I like him as a person. So I've cool known guy, him since, yeah. totally a cool guy. Then when I went to Vivid, he was the director. And it's like, okay, Christy Canning, great. But by like the fifth or sixth film that he shot me in, I think he got bored shooting me. I think PT liked the newer girls, maybe younger, dare I even admit. And that's cool. I get it. I get it. You know, I remember like showing up on a scene with um, Tom Byron and I, I, I could almost see him rolling his eyes like, I got to fuck her again. Like, I get it. You want fresh and new. I totally, I take no offense to that at all. T, or T, T, you know, like Tom's got to fuck me. And he's probably like looking over at the new young one walking and going, why can't I have that one? So this is like the second time you... Like the second time when you came back, right? Yeah, Night Not for the first Hot time. in the City in 1989. But it was still a great scene. But my point is, like, I get that PT wanted to direct the newer talent. I think he and, he and I were too familiar with each other. We worked in front of the camera together. Now he was shooting me from behind. So it got about the sixth. Yeah, I'll have one. It got to, like, the sixth or seventh shoot for Vivid that um, he would just go. And... Jason would direct me, Jason Sullivan. Those were some of my best scenes. Good. I think PT was like, okay, it's been 20 minutes. Come on, Christie's tits or whatever. Like, 
the freshness, the newness I felt had worn off about the sixth film that I worked with PT. Yeah. And it's no diss against me, it's no diss against him, it's just we both needed fresh, fresh meat in our sex scenes, whether it was in front of the camera or behind the camera. Because then Jason took over and suddenly my sex scenes were like two hours long. And I'm like, really? yeah, I can get really? into it. Wow. So you're right, because nobody, I mean, you'd have to be there. I, I think you'd have to be there at that time. Yeah. Right, because today's different. They have all these additives that people take, Cabaret, Viagra. Right. You don't know the real pressure and the real formula for making beauty, I don't think, because it's it's not as organic. Right. So, but the point is, when somebody's energy can cast a cloud over your scene, or, I mean, can just drain you and take it away from you, you know, it's very supernatural almost. I agree. Like, I remember I'd see PT just, like, sitting on the Apple box, and kind of like, you know, slun slouched over, looking down. Whereas Jason, it was fresh to him. He got to shoot Christy Canyon. Yeah. How f He was so happy. And he'd be behind the camera and he'd be like, excellent. Oh, that's beautiful. There you go, Christy. Take you know, like. That's what he sounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was fresh for both of us. And again, nothing negative on PT or me. Our time had come and gone. We were both ready to move on. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And then well, after I mean, Jason, the chemistry was not there, and that's okay. It doesn't always have to be there. And then after Jason, I got um, my last couple films for Vivid were Brad Armstrong and his partner at the time, Greg Steele. That was some rocking stuff. Now we're talking young, fresh blood at mm -hmm. Vivid. Do you know? And as a performer, everyone needs fresh. You don't want to always right. be with the same person. I had to work with Melanie Moore. 50 times. I loved her. She was so I haven't so, heard that name in forever. So sweet. Yeah. But I, just between right. me and you, she really was never my type to begin with. I get it. I had to work with her 50 times. I hear you. I love it that you mentioned her. I was in a film for Vivid, and this goes perfectly with Melanie Moore. And I can never remember if it was Sex Asylum 4 or... Uh, Twisted. I always get those two films I was in mixed up. Was I in Twisted? I think you, you were, which was after a portrait of Christy. Melanie Moore was in one of those, and I was fucking somebody. I can't remember who. And, you know, then six months later, Twisted or Sex Asylum 4 comes out, and I'm, you know, at bookstores signing it, because we used to go on the press junkets, you know, from Vivid. And a guy comes up with his copy to get signed, the B VHS tape, and he's like, I love it that you finally did an anal scene, Christy. And I said, I did? Thank you. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is he talking about? An anal scene? Because I never did anal in my films. It's, or oh, my personal, yeah. if it's just not my kink. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, thank you. But I'm thinking, what is he talking about? And I remember calling Steve going, this guy just said that I did an anal scene in this movie. And he's like, oh yeah, we used Melanie Moore's ass. So we got footage of your face and doggy. But it was her ass Whoa, that the guy's really? cock was going in. He's yeah. like, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Do you want me to pay you more? I'm like, no, but maybe you could have given me a heads up because, I mean, I kept my cool, but I knew something had happened. Melanie Moore's ass was a stunt double. Is that movie magic or what? And is that an incredible fact? She had a history. little ass. I've got a big ass. I don't even, they didn't even. Yeah, she didn't have much of an ass. She was a real and, thin girl. And the skin tone. White. Was not the same. No, I've got the Armenian darker a skin, bit and of she was pigments a yes, little different. Yeah, but somehow they did it, and they no one. They all thought it was my ass, yeah, probably because they know? hadn't seen it getting fucked. So how did they know it wasn't mine? That's a trip. Yeah. Isn't that funny? She, Melanie Moore was my stunt double for my rear. She did a lot of anal. She loved the anal. Melanie Moore was a very nice person, very nice person. It's so easy to work with. I would never say anything wrong or bad towards. She was very very nice, but fifty times. Work with somebody is a lot. And that's how, that goes right back to how I think PT and I both felt about each other. We'd go down the set, hey, how's it going? You know? And then when it was Jason, I was like, oh, how are you? It just, the energy yeah. was different. And being on porn, you need that high sexual energy drive. Yeah. I want to know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Here you are. You know, you, you seemed to me like you did average guys before you got in the business, right? Six guys, you said. Yeah, very. And none of them did what 
I would have done to you, you know, just no. smash you for nine hours straight. I used to right. have sex with my ex-girlfriend when I was 16. Her name was Shannon. I know you're looking, you little punk. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I used to have sex with her for four or five hours almost every day, right? Just like normal, right? Like, you know, she tell her friends, they look at me crazy. Yeah, I was into sex. Uh, yeah, she was 14, I was 16. But here you are with normal guys, and then you get into this business I know. where, I don't know if you work with John Holmes, but John Holmes is around? He was around. I never worked with John Holmes, but we worked on the same set together. Did you see how big his thing was? Yes, and one day on, uh, it was WPINK-TV for Paradise Visuals. It was January 1985, and John Holmes was on that. I forget who he worked with. I have no memory of that brunette. Anyway, so I go into the makeup room and there's Alexis kissing him. Alexis Vogel. Wow, the she was, yeah, she was pretty. She was kissing, kissing John him Holmes. And his dick was between her legs, not in her pussy, but it was between her legs. And you could still see this much of his cock. And so I straddled the rest of it. What? And there was still that much you could see. Like, I never had sex with him, but we were like, you know, kissing him and what? playing and really? playing with his balls and whatever. But so, no, I was around in that era. But wow. I think that's right when he started to kind of get out of the business and maybe uh, go into his, you know. Uh -huh. Drugs? Yeah. Extra drugs? Like he couldn't get it up for whoever he was working for. But that he was day? a nice guy. Yeah. Oh, because you guys... You put him in a cock shock. And then you shouldn't have did that because you can't do that before the scene. They're like, we need you on this. But anyway, so no. So how big? Show me how big you think it was. Oh, he had to be a good 13 sure. inches. 13 inches? Yeah. Is that about that? He yeah. was huge. Like, there, maybe even bigger. Like, Alexis was straddling him, and then my pussy was up against her butt. And I was straddling him, pressed up against her. So my tits were against her back. And you could still see a couple inches coming out from behind my ass. And you didn't want to stick it in real quick? No. No? No. He was playing around. Just playing around. So you kissed him? Yeah. Was he a good looking guy? He was, in yeah. that real kind of coming off the 70s way. Yeah. No, and he was a, a star. Perm. Yeah, but. total perm. <laughs> and the big mustache. But he was a star, so big I man. respected that this was royalty in the business. Right. right. Uh, that's a big deal. I think people lose sight of. I mean, he was like uh, the king. Yeah. Was he, he was. nice? Extremely nice. Very quiet. Yeah. Didn't talk to anyone really. Bill Margo loved him, huh? Loved him. Bill Margo was wonderful. He was great. He was great. We've met such great characters in our yeah. time. I mean, his life is a good life. 73 or 74 is not so young. He had a great life, and I don't think he was in the best of health shape. You know, I don't think he ate well, and he probably never worked out, and, yeah. you know, probably attributes to not living till you're 80 instead of 75. Yeah. But he had a yeah. great life. Yeah. It was a good life for him. He was a great guy. So, John Holmes, that's interesting. So, you didn't, did you want to have sex with him? No. No? It was too big, or you didn't really care, or what? Did you... I didn't really care who I worked with. Yeah. If they would have said you're working with him, I would have worked with him. But oh. it was just never presented to me. Okay, so, all right, so let's go down the list. I mean, because I'm just curious. I was a big porn fan. So, uh, how about Randy West? Did you work with him? Many times. One, he was on that top tier, too. Oh. I love... Randy West. And that's the kind of guy that I like, too. I like them a little older, a little more seasoned. Rugged. Ru yes, like the Marlboro Man. Yeah. Isn't that funny? No, the kids nowadays don't even know what a Marlboro Man But he was just, he was suave. He was romantic. He was yeah. sexy and an amazing lay. He had the full package. I love Randy West, yes. I thought he was strong, right? Like, really strong. I remember that I used to hang out with Buck, and Buck had kind of swindled or stolen Casey Williams from Randy West. But, I mean, he didn't really trip out. He was a strong guy. Such a nice guy. Yeah. Never had a problem with him at all. Quiet, yeah, quiet. Very quiet. I mean, I remember at first going into Jim's office, and he looked at me. Uh, right? He probably said, this, who is this? Because probably my name started getting around a little bit, right? <laughs> right. And he probably looked at me, and probably said, fuck. Yeah, because yeah. I, was, I was hungry. I don't know if there's anybody more hungry than me that ever came around, because I work four or five scenes a day happily for low money, and thank you very much. And, we're, <laughs> and without side. help from a small blue pill or exactly. anything like that. Right. That was a true coxman back in the day. I was hungry and happy, yeah. and thank porno. You know what I mean? I know. I hear you. So Randy, he was a good guy. So how about John Leslie? 
I never got to work with him. Oh, oh. And I'll tell you why. In 84 and 85 era of my career, he was a New York guy. Oh, yeah. I never did New York. Then when I got back in, in 89, he was now a director under contract for VCA. I was vivid. Oh. Our paths just never, I not, he's a good looking guy too. So yeah, he had something going on. Yeah, your type, right? My type, oh, a little older than me, but kind of that fatherly charisma. figure to, oh, big time, like a movie star charisma. Yeah, powerful, he had like, oh. He had the it factor, beautiful. Never got to work with him. Yeah, that's too bad. Huh? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, he was special. He really was. How about Jamie Gillis? Yes, my first <laughs> um, three-way with Ginger and him. Oh yeah, how was that? For Paradise Visuals. It was Ginger and I having sex. That was the first time I was ever with a girl. Uh -huh. Night of Loving Dangerously or on Golden Blonde. I don't remember because we shot them the same week. But anyway, so there I am with Ginger and she's so cute and I'm getting my pussy licked by a girl and I get to go down on a girl. I'd never been like, it was amazing. I got That's your first one. First on uh -huh. film with Ginger Lynn. So there I am like eating her out going, this is the best. I can't believe it. Then she's like, yeah, whatever. Come sit on my face, Christy or what? I'm like, okay, I'll do, you know. Really? Wow. <laughs> what do you want from me? Okay. She's so cute, huh? The cutest. Like, why are you in porn? You're too cute. Like, she could have been, like, you know, a little Who's model. So yeah. She was, like, the girl next door that That's was. High, so yeah. then I'm, like, riding her face or whatever. And then. She was horny, or, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Or she's eating me out and, like, her ass is in the air. And I'm, like, oh, my God, I'm fucking in love with this girl. Really? I can't believe how lucky I am. I'm having sex with this cute. I didn't even know what Ginger Lynn really meant because I was so new in the business. But I knew she was a star. And then, so she's having sex with me. She's eating me out. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm coming in her mouth. I'm having so much fun. And then a guy starts fucking her. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? She's my girl. What do you, that's my, what? It was Jamie Gillis. And he comes into the scene and he starts fucking her from behind as she's eating my pussy out. But I remember looking and like, it kind of broke the magic. Like, wait a minute. You got pissed. I did, jealous. I got like, a little jealous that she was having, you know, another guy that I was gonna eat her out again. Wait a minute, he's not supposed to have sex with wow, her. Really? And then- and he's a kinky guy. He's kinky. And Twisted then, kinky. He really is. He's we epitome. worked a few times. Oh, he oh, is kinky. Horrible. He was great and he was, uh, he. He was, we didn't work a lot together, but that was the first time of a few that we worked together. Then he fucked her in the ass. And I'm like sitting on the bed watching this dick go in her butt. I'm like, I guess I've kind of heard of girls doing that. But again, I was still naive. I'd never seen a girl do it. And 19. I certainly hadn't done it. Yeah, I'm barely 18 still. And I'm like, my face is like inches from her butt and his cock in her. And I'm like, like I'm jealous of him, but it's still hot and it's still sexy. Really? Wow. And then so I'm, I'm looking at them like inches from her ass and all of a sudden he pulls the cock out and shoves it in my mouth and comes in me. And I'm like, oh, wow. I really? did ATM before it was even a thing. Oh, so you didn't have sex with him? I did, but that was like the oh, final okay. shot. No, then we, you know, cause he came, he was fucking her. Then he fucked me. Then he fucked her again. Then he fucked me again. You know, total porn going back and forth. And then the final of the scene though, was he screwed her in the ass and pulled out and popped it in my mouth. How was he? Horrible. I don't think he had a good diet. Oh, he, sexually he was great. Sexually, His yeah. cum load. I remember I'm on the bed. I'd never tasted a guy's cum before. And I'm sitting on the bed and I'm like, my mouth is open and it's like dripping out. And all of a sudden I said, I'm going to throw up. And, and they're like, cut. I never had a guy's jizz in my mouth. And I love fucking him, but he did not have the best tasting cum. I think he ate a lot of red meat, probably drank a little too, you know, and it came uh -huh. out through the load. And I'm going to throw up. <laughs> so, but he fucked you good. He was, he was okay. a good fuck, though. I'll he give was? him that. He was an amazing, he was good. Mental. He had a mental thing going on, right? Yeah, he was quirky. Passionate, I mean, you know, like, I mean, or Oh, twisted. baby. Oh, yeah. Take daddy's dick. You know, that kind of sex. It was so good. It was sexy. It was good? Okay. He was quirky. He was twisted, but I liked it. Yeah. I wasn't attracted to him like I was to a, a Randy West, per se. Uh -huh. But I was attracted, you know. It wasn't like, I'm not going to work with him. How about um, Jerry Butler? Never worked with him. Reb. Is that because of Reb? He was a Reb guy? He must have been a Reb guy. 
he, he must have been a rep guy. I never worked with him. And I never even really met him until the mid 90s when he came back in the early 90s when he came back in the business. That's, that's what I, yeah, that's trippy, right? Yeah, I met him. Because but, don't forget, he wrote that book. Thank God I never worked with him because he talked smack about 95% of the girls. This one's pussy stink. This one was a whore. This one was a bitch. Da, 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 da. So luckily, I never worked with him. Then he thought he was going to make millions off his book. It bombed. People don't want to hear bad stuff about their favorite star. Do you know what I mean? It was a very negative book. It didn't make a dime. His divorce from the girl on um, cousin, well, who is he's married to a girl that was on like the Adams family. That lasted a minute. But he thought he was done with the business. I'm going to diss everyone. I'm marrying this, you know, good... I think once they both got off drugs, he's like, oh, well, marriage didn't work. The book flopped. Anyway, so he came back in the business and he was on my set with Jennifer Stewart in the 92 era. It was one of the passages for Vivid. I did one through four. I don't remember which one. And I remember someone saying, yeah, they got, PT got him for 50 bucks because no one will hire him because he was such an asshole to as everybody. A, as a performer? Yes. Wow. I guess he came back begging for work. This was the rumor. He came wow. back begging. PT had no before. money. I guess PT's like, all I've got is 50 bucks in the budget. And he's like, sold, I'll take it. Wow. Well, but cool. I didn't work with him. Uh, well, yeah. And I didn't care because I don't like people that knock us. Yeah, I don't like. Because he wrote shit about all my friends. Fuck em. And I fucked those pussies and they didn't stink. They were beautiful. Really? <laughs> I don't remember whose, but I remember thinking, I never got any bad puss. What about Randy Spears? Never worked with him. Wow. Never worked with him. Really? That's Trippy. Worked on a same set with him when he was married to Daniela. Uh, but I think that Daniel point... Daniel Rogers. Yes. Yeah. And I think at that point, they were kind of just working with each other. Never oh. worked with him. Because he knocked the business. I know. Well, he found God. <laughs> I know. Anyway, so um, we don't want to talk too much. I liked him. You know what I mean? I liked Randy. I loved him as a person. Great. Loved name, him. Right. Beautiful, sexy guy. I think the last time I talked to him was probably about seven years ago, right before he did that God interview on that went, you know, there's That's something seven in, years ago, that interview. I think oh. it was. Holy shit. No, no. I think the interview was four years ago, right? right. But the last time I talked to him really uh, before that came out was seven years ago. Okay. And I, we talked and he was working like packing meat at the graveyard shift over in Texas somewhere. Like he had quit, he got a real job, he was doing good. And then three years later, so yeah, four years ago, he came out with that. And I called him up, I'm like, what the fuck, Randy? Really? What are you doing you knocking the business? It. That's fucking gangster. I told you earlier in the show, if you fuck with Christy, you might disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, you got to be kidding, baby. You can't blame the business for all your troubles. Let's face it. They loved him. Loved him. If they loved, loved him, they loved him like he was God. He was the golden child. He's golden child. They loved he him. was. And, you know, I'm just going to say everybody in the world, stay away from drugs because that'll mess you up. Porn doesn't get you messed up. You can walk out. It's the drugs. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, we want to talk about drugs. First, I'm going to go through the rest of the guys. So how about Joey Silvera? I worked with him in the 80 to 84 era. Really liked him. Good guy. But we didn't have that chemistry. I could fuck him. I could get an orgasm out. But it wasn't like one of the main players that I really loved working with. I it think, was okay. He was goofy fun. I thought I just saw something on Twitter where they posted me, you, and Joey in a sex scene. We probably did. I don't remember all my scenes. Was I'm that, sorry. Was that it? Is that it in um, Sherman Oaks at that restaurant on Van Nuys Boulevard next to Jim? That was the one. No, that was the one with Peter North. Oh, that was with Peter North. That was the one at midnight when the restaurant closed yeah, and we fucked on the big chef's butcher block. Right, so I worked with you before that. Yep, for sure. Then it had to be for video exclusives. Yeah, I guess so. We'll look it up later. So how is Peter North? One of the greatest, one of the best. I love that man. Loved working with him. Love, love, love him. He's great. One of the greatest, sweetest guys. Ever. Really one of the nicest. And you know what? I, he just, he was such a humble guy. Is such a humble guy. Yeah. No one, he had no attitude. He had no, I'm great. One of the most humble performers I've ever worked with. Such a cool guy. Such a cool guy. 
Always wanted the girl happy. Always wanted to know what position do you want, Christy? Do you mind if I come on your tits? Not that it ever made my tits. It maybe hit the tits of a <laughs> fucking director. You know what I mean? Because that load, there's no way he was going to hit me. What do you think about that load? That's... I never seen one before or after like him. <laughs> I call him the X-Man. And you know what? Here's the thing. Back in the day, no, we said this before. There was no help for the guy. I loved you performers that showed up with your A game. You guys got there. You had the hard on. You could switch positions. You could hold the hard on during the whole changing of film. Uh. Hey, I got somebody here that wants, that loves you so much. He's on an interview. Can you say hi? Yeah. Okay. Question. Who did you go see dancing at the Flamingo many, many years ago? I love you, Peter. You are so cute. I'm doing an interview with our TT boy. And I'm like, he, I'm like, you, you, there were like three of you that were my top performers. I was just give, giving, singing your praises, how you got to the set, man. And you guys were just rock solid from start to finish with that countdown down to the second. <laughs> Remember our countdown? <laughs> 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 Good. She's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. he's, she's, she's gangster and sweet all in one. <laughs> like all of us. We come from that. We're like that street it. smart. I well, I miss you, baby. I miss you too. Next time you're in the LA area, let me know. Actually, I want to, I want to uh, set something up because, you know, I have a product that I want to endorse and, and, and uh, go on with you on serious uh, radio there with the, uh, Yes, Vivid Radio, Sirius XM, channel 415. <laughs> 415. Anytime, you know my number. All right. All right, bro. I'm going to um, call you right when I'm done. All right. All right, man, thanks. Bye, bye baby. All right, bye. He's so cute. I love Peter. I He's love great. him. Greatest of all time, right? One of the greatest or the greatest, I don't know, because that cum shot, he's got a big dick. He comes in great shape, yeah. always stay perfect. You know, he has so many factors that make him above the others. And he's so nice. I, you know what? I have not one negative thing to say about him. About 99% of the guys, there's not one negative thing to say. Yeah, because you're too cool. You're too there's, nice. There's one guy I'm not crazy about. Really? Who? Nick East. Oh, I beat him up. No. Yeah. That is the one guy. I didn't even know that about you. That is the one guy... And I've said this on my show that I didn't come with. I, there was no chemistry. I get to the Vivid set, and he's like, yeah, it was fucking Raquel Darian all day yesterday. Oh, she's great. And then I was fucking Terry Weigel and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, fuck you. Let's Nick, do our you scene. you said that? Yeah. Totally bragging. And now my mind's like, I'm going to have a problem with this guy. Anyone that brags about how great they are in bed usually sucks. So then the cameras start rolling, and he couldn't get it up. Could wow. not get it up to save his life. Really? I think they brought in a stunt dick. Really? That was, in all my years of making porn, that was the one scene I didn't like. Wow. I didn't like that scene. And again, I loved 99%. He's the one guy I didn't like. But I let it go. We had no, no chemistry. It was in the negative zone. Then I almost forgot he existed. And then about, oh, God... 10 years ago when Rob Black, who I have no issues with, wrote some shit about Steve Hirsch on his then blog. And I'm like, I love Steve. Steve is, my, he's my savior. I love that man. Like well, he's- Why would he talk about him? He talks something and I, and I like said, oh, Steve's actually a really nice guy. He's been such a, like, why knock the good people in our business? He's yeah. been nothing but a, a wonderful person to work for. He has the girl's best interest at heart. You know, of exactly. all people, you're going to knock Steve. It was something like that. It was just kind of like, hey, I'm watching you. He's a good guy. Don't And, and you're a nice guy, too. Like, wh where'd this come from? Yeah. Who cares? That's a whole other. Okay. But Nick East wrote, figures, you bitch, you'd like him because did it. And I thought, you, the guy that couldn't get it up? <laughs> like, oh, all right, let me tell you the story, then, to make you happy. And I don't like him, and he doesn't like me. So... Twerp, One out of 35 years isn't bad. Let me tell you what happened, if you want to hear. Yeah. So he's talking about me, saying I'm this and that, about I'm not nice to the girl, blah, blah, blah. He's talking about Peter North, who I consider my brother. Yeah. Right? 
So there's this girl, she was sexy, she liked me a lot, you know, Bianca Trump, she was... Oh, I remember her. Yeah, so she was, you know, told me this. And she had her, some of her stuff. She was hanging out with me at my house, at my apartment, and I was like, uh, you know, and so then she went on her way, you know, and maybe ended up at Nick East house or something, I don't know for sure. What, I mean, not, I don't think she was fucking him, but who knows, who cares? But she tells me this story, right? So I go, okay. She, she was into me, you know what I mean? So I said, just uh, let's get him. <laughs> I love and that so devilish I said, grin. <laughs> so I say, because how else can I get him? I got to catch right. him just right, you know what I mean? So she goes to his apartment and knocks on the door, and I'm there, and I'm saying, hey, buddy, come here. I say, you're talking shit. About my boy, I don't care about me. You know, what I mean? right? I just need an excuse. I love it. I said you're talking shit. I think he said let me go or something. I said. <laughs> so he was. Yeah, you know, I got heavy hands, so he was done, and I had him on the ground. I love it. Something like that, you know. What I mean, I said beg for your life. <laughs> my God. Beg, mer beg for mercy, right? And I made him beg. And I just chucked him. Uh, and I, and I left and he was, you know, done. Oh my God, TT, I love that. <laughs> Isn't that funny that we, the two of us, because we pretty much get along with everyone. Yeah. We're kind of in our own lane, but don't cross it in a negative way. You know what I mean? But I love that. I remember somebody at Vivid, I won't, I'll tell you after, you know, Mercy. And she's like, TT, I don't really like that girl you're working with. Give her the extra oh, oh Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, the would, girl's see, like crying at the end. People would say that. Go ahead and give her a special treatment. I'll turn the engines on. <laughs> Which in the 90s, late 90s or early 2000s was unheard of. Now I'd be like, yeah, we call it Gonzo. And we just fucking uh, bitch slap them and donkey punch them. And <laughs> I didn't punch them. No. Yeah. Remember that, though, that started donkey punching? I don't know. Uh, that know. was like in the early 2000s where a guy's like fucking a girl from behind and right as she or he's about to come, he like socks her in the neck. It got crazy. Really? It wow. got crazy. It was when I first started working at Playboy Radio and these girls would come in and she'd be like, he hurt me. He donkey punched me. I'm like, what's that? Yes. I was like, what happened in those four years since I quit? Oh, my God. Uh I know. Okay. It got really nasty there I, for a I, minute. I don't, I, I don't like this. I, see, I don't either. And that's why, like, we made love and fucked on film, but not no. that, like, not crazy degradation. I don't like that. But we got nice and rough, and yet in that loving, sexy yeah. way with each other. Right. I, didn't, I don't like that ugly stuff. Well, it but, got a little rough there, but... Uh. Uh, what about um, John Doe? Loved him. He was nice. Loved him. He was one of the greatest lovers. Yeah. Part of it was he had that kind of dark aura about yeah. him, but it was sexy because you didn't know what he was thinking. Yeah, he Do was you know? A, he was dark. He yeah, was dark. <laughs> He'd be like, all right, get over here and start sucking my cock. Yeah. And I'd be like, crawling on the ground. Okay, really? thank you for your permission. Like, and wow. then he'd hold the head down. Yep, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, that feels good. Like, he was so sexy because I couldn't yeah. break through. He wow. was so closed off. Like, if he wasn't married to my fellow vivid girl, Deidre Holland, oh, I would have been fucking... Really? Wow. I would have had him moved in within a day of fucking him. Wow. He was big words. so sexy. That was my kind of guy because he was troubled. Uh, you know what right. I mean? I, I always wanted to be like, oh, I'll make him better. You know, you could tell that he had fucking demons in him. Yeah. But it worked. When it came to sex, it came... I mean, we had great sex scenes together. Yeah, that's a trip. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a trip. I mean, he was a good performer. And he had a big dick, real big dick. It's hard to tell. He had a great cock, and he knew how to use it. Yeah. And there was something really sexy about him. Yeah. Well, I know that some of... Yeah, he was tall. He was... Tall, he, dark, and handsome. A deep voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah something. So and every so often, you'd see him laugh, and it would just, like, melt my heart, like... He's so cute when he smiles. Yeah. And then he'd go right back to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went parachuting one time in the San Diego area. And uh, yeah, we free falled about 13.5. Oh, my God. He was like a dude's dude. Yeah, he was. He used to look at me probably and say, I didn't think that guy would do what he did. That's what I think. And he used to look at me, how did TT yeah. do this? Yeah. I, you know, I built a big company, you know what I mean? My huge. Company. One of the few guys that really was a huge success story. 
Yeah, I shot we my my catalog is fifteen hundred movies. Good for you. You know, and uh, anyways, so I think he used to look at me sometimes. What the fuck? I didn't think this guy would do it. You know, we went parachuting that time, and it was an eight-hour course. Yeah. Right before you parachute, pre free fall, and I got ninety-eight percent on my test. He got an eighty-something. He's like, how that guy get that test? Yeah. Some people didn't think. I think that I was that sharp. I think because I wasn't full of shit. You know what I mean? I, I remember the first time someone, I can't remember who, told me, yeah, T.T. Boy, he he was one of the smart guys in our business. And and you and Ron Jeremy, I heard, were the two, you know, financially smartest ones. And even I said, wow, I didn't, he was so quiet. Like, I didn't, I wouldn't have seen that one coming. Yeah. But it's always those quiet ones you got to watch out for. I love I that, though. And I love hearing success stories, because you and I both know you don't hear that many when all is said and done. Wow. Uh, I, I was... From what I know, I'm the only performer, you know, high level, successful, you know, performer of the year, all that stuff. Yeah. To be a successful company owner distributor. Right. 14 years of distribution. It's a war out there, you know, doing yes. that. You know what I mean? The worst. You know, so you're fighting in a war and then OSHA attacked me at the same time. So, I mean, nobody else no, in our generation or after was a distributor, you know, that was a porno a certified porno star they tried it but they crashed i totally agree i remember years ago 10 15 years whatever 13 i interviewed john michaels on playboy radio mm -hmm. and his company had already folded and i said why though because you're so unique and you're such a great guy what you know what was the downfall of your company he said distribution killed me it's the war that was it Everything else was great. Distribution was my downfall. I couldn't get paid. Yeah, distribution's hard. I mean, you got to know how to fight the fight. It's a war, you know what I mean? How do you get that? Slip the punches, get the money, you know? Keep selling the product. It's not so easy. Well, yeah, Shawn Michaels on a show. He's great. He's so respectful, so well-spoken, you know? He's good. So what about Tom Byron? I love Tom Byron. He was one of the guys like Peter North and Mark Wallace. I was going to bring up Mark next. Mark Wallace, Peter North, and Tom Byron were the three guys, and Ron Jeremy, that I had sex with the most in on film. Right? 84 and 85. Uh, it was a rotating door. Nope, it can't be Tom Byron today. He was yesterday. Okay, it's Peter North coming in. Those were the four main guys that I had sex I mean, I had to have sex with each of them 30, 40 times. Wow. 30 times, wow. Well, we only worked together like two or three times, so I guess I probably don't count. But um, who was your favorite? I, I, I got to go with Peter North. I really do. I really do. Your favorite my, of all time. Yes. And then the, then the 90s kicked in, and I got to give credit to my 90s coxman, that my favorite two from the 90s would have to be uh, Mark Davis Right, and Stephen St. Croix. Really, St. Croix. And again, right. Stephen St. Croix would make me laugh. It, I'm right. telling you, if you make me laugh, it's a shoe win. Because uh -huh. he had such a funny personality. Yeah. And he had a little bit of that dark side to him also. A little bit. A little, he likes drugs a little bit. I didn't know about that, but I could tell that he was like, he didn't really want to be there. Because he always wanted to be a mainstream actor. Right. So there was always that side of him that loved what he did. And God knows he was great in bed. But there was always that side of him, I think, that thought, why am I fucking here? Why aren't I on like an MGM set or a Paramount or, you know? Uh -huh. And I think that he was very troubled from that. Like, how did I trip and fall into this business? That's uh -huh. what I always felt. Yeah, some people don't appreciate. Appreciate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, me too. And I had no other aspirations. <laughs> uh, really? I was wondering, where do you want to be when you grow up? I have no idea. After my radio dog and pony show was done, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. So you used to dance and make a lot of money? Yeah, it was great out there on the road. When, what, what years were that? From 1990 till about 2001. Yeah, I remember. You know, I you know Jane and Jenna pretty well back then, and they used to come to the house, and you know, after she'd be dancing for a week or whatever... You should just throw all these ones and fives into the drawer of the room that they had stayed at at my house. And, um, yeah, 
I think she told me before she made like 75 a week or something like that. It's a lot of money. Or maybe Jay told me. I don't know. But, um, you, I mean, you're Christy Canyon, so <clears throat> you were making... It was good. 30 or 40? Probably. So that was beautiful. Or we intended to. I, you know what? It's one of those things that I never talk about money, but the money was great. Okay. The money was good. You saved all your money? I was good at investing. Really? What did you invest in? Property and stocks and... Really? Stocks too? Wow. And you did well? Because stocks are tricky. Oh, Bush era? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That little fucking shrub when he was our president. I'm like... 10 years dancing on the road and it keeps going down every day. It was scary there for a minute. And you kept it and then went back? Just let it, let it ride. And now you're, it was beautiful, so you're as great? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. okay. You said you had a beautiful home in the hills? I, uh, you know what, life's good. But I was one of the girls, I always have this, like, fear that I'm going to be broke. And that's what drove me to be somewhat smart with my money. You know what I mean? I don't, and, and bringing it back to, Paradise Visuals, when I was dating the guy, Michael, he used to always say to me, save all your money, Christy. And I'd say, okay, why? Because it's called fuck you money. Because the more you have, the more you could say to people, fuck you, I don't want to do that. Don't, I don't have to do that. Fuck you. Because you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't have to do smart. anything. And it always stuck with me since 1985. That's like, great. You picked that up. I did. I mean, that's fantastic that you met him and you... You know, kept that information because how easy it is to spend money. I know. And then he used to always say to me, and it won't be pink forever. And I used to think, was it going to like turn a different <laughs> color? But so I think it was an analogy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? mom didn't tell me it's going to turn like blue or something. I don't know what he meant by that. But I always kept those words. So Michael, if you were listening, that stuff you used to tell me in 1985, it's stuck in my head. Save your money. It's fuck you money. And it's not going to be pink forever. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Great. Yeah. You met him and yeah. hung out with him. It didn't work out, but you know what? In life, you have to just take the good from situations. You're really so positive, you know, with every situation. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. But I'm sure you had ups and downs, right? Everybody does. Not that many. Really? Wow. I really, I mean, I really feel like in the business, I was spoon fed, spoon fed from the minute I got with Jim South, went, you know, quit for four years, came back. Vivid was like amazing. I mean, it was like a fucking silver spoon that, you know, and then from there I worked for Playboy Radio for eight years. That was another fabulous company. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was really lucky. Maybe it's your aura, your positive aura, maybe. Maybe that. And if there was one time in 84 that I shot a single girl layout for um, a guy named Ed. And it was like in Hollywood and some little rinky dink place. And I remember I'm like, you know, in the chair, my ass is facing out. And I'm like, you know, showing it. He's like, click, click, click. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm facing the wall. And all of a sudden I feel something on my puss. And I'm like. And I shoot up from doggy position. I'm like, what was that? And he's like, oh, it looked like your pussy needed to get a little wet. So I licked it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm out of here. And I remember saying, I want my $300 and I'm at it. Like, I didn't put up with anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like and I he, said, really, careful. And then I remember he paid me my money and I called Jim South from my rotary phone at home or whatever, you know, my little dump in Hollywood. And I remember crying, going, he tried to touch me. Like, what a little prude I was. Wow. But I wasn't even attracted to him. Like, ew. I make the decision who fucks me. Yeah, but that's pretty kinky. You know what I mean? He said, it needs to be licked. I mean, it's kind of, you know, off the wall, kinky. I couldn't believe. I was like, that's but I, I never did anything in the business or in life that I didn't want to do. I never did anal. Why? Because I don't like anal. It's not like I went home every night and three dicks went up my ass. I didn't like it. I still don't like it. Guess what? I got a wet mouth. I got beautiful natural tits. And I got a sweet, smooth push you could fuck. The ass is off limits. If you can't deal with the other things. Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, get over it. The ass is not. I think I have such a great uh, time in the business because I never did anything I didn't want to do. Yeah. You never belittled yourself. Never. I never look back and go, oh, I shouldn't have shot that scene. I loved every scene, with the exception of Nick East, that I shot. How did you get in the business? I mean, that's the major question here. Jim, I mean, we know, Jim, how did yeah. you find your way to Jim? I know, And why? Right? I know. Broke. 
I was kicked out of my house when I was like 17 and a half. And I, my mom's husband didn't like me. My dad's wife didn't like me. I don't know. No one, (laughs) but they were always fighting and they always blamed it on me. So I mean, your tits, somebody's looking at your tits or not? I hope not. That would be gross. But, um, so I just remember moving out. I don't even know if they kicked me out per se, but I just didn't feel welcome. It turns out that even after I left the house, they both ended up divorcing their current spouses. So guess what? It wasn't me after all. But anyway, so I went to go live with a friend of mine. His mom was so nice, Martha. They let me move in with them in Burbank until I turned almost 18, got a place in Hollywood. And you know what? It was 1984. I wasn't even quite 18, but everyone had good fake IDs back then. And no one really cared. You know, if you had the money deposit, they didn't care back in 84. So I was working at a clothing store in the daytime. And then at nighttime, I was a hostess at a restaurant on Sunset called The Source. And I was broke all the time, you know, like, I mean, rent was $400, but I had a car that was breaking down all the time. Anyway, and I just remember thinking, but I'm on my own and this is really fun. I love it. And then one day my MG midget was broken down. I had an MG midget. Yes, forest green. It was Uh. so cute, but it was always broken. So I'm waiting for my girlfriend to pick me up on, uh, in front of my apartment in Hollywood on Orchid and Franklin. And I'm standing out there. It's like 100 Close degrees. Close to where Rollins, right? Yeah, pretty much. Right below the Magic Castle. And and so I'm waiting. And this really, you know, this guy pulls over in this white Trans Am. And it had the T-tops and the gold eagle on the hood, right? And I'm like. Smoky in the van. Yeah, but the white version of the uh, car. And I'm like, I wish I had enough money for that car, <laughs> you know? And he's like, hello, pretty girl. What are you doing? You know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for my girlfriend to pick me up. And he's like, why don't you wait in my car? Because it was like 100 degrees out. I want people to understand, all right? Listen, way back then, first of all, there's not that many cars on the road, right? A. B, if the car is so bad, like one of the baddest cars from the movie, and it's, you know, and a young guy is driving it, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> what do you do? You want to get in? Yeah, here I am. I think at this point I was 18, but, you know, I was so like, oh, my God, and he's cute on top of it, you know? He's like, wait in my car. He had the he had the sheepskin covers. Oh, <laughs> Remember <I'm> those? That <laughs> <laughs> you'd buy it. So I'm like, okay, and I get in the car outside of my building. I, there's no fear at 18. Plus, he was a like good-looking 18, 19-year-old guy. Oh, he's young. Yeah, and... And he's like, so what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a hostess at nine. During the day, I work at a clothing store, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, you've got to, you know, have you ever thought of figure modeling? And I'm like, I do kind of have nice hands. And, you know, I'm looking at my feet. Yeah, okay. He's like, no, figure modeling, it's naked. And he pulls out the hustler from the back. And he's got like the paper clip on his pages. And he flips open the hustler and he's like, like this. And there he is with like, Crystal Breeze. Crystal Breeze, brown, yes. dark hair, Spanish looking. Yes. She was sexy looking. Sexy. Yeah. He pulls out his layout and hustler, and there's Crystal Breeze with his. Crystal Breeze. Yeah, I remember her. You know, and that's when you had to keep the, the cock like a couple inches from the mouth. Right, simulation. Total, total simulation. And it was like at a Ron Vogel, you know, it looks like Ron Vogel shot or, or Clive? Was, you said hustler, that's Clive. It, maybe it was, but it, it, I look back at now and I think it was so Ron Vogel with like the beach ball oh, okay. and a beach towel, but then white walls. Okay. Like the setting was a little, you know, slap shot, the boom uh-huh. box in the corner. Not like Clive went Right, far. Clive went all the way. I think this was a Ron Vogel. Anyway, he's like, no, like this. And I'm like, oh. Do you have big dick? No, it wasn't huge. Oh, okay. It wasn't huge. No, more girthy, but not that long. He was like a kind of a muscle guy, you know? Like you'd see him on Venice Beach uh-huh. pumping iron. But no, the cock wasn't huge. And I'm like, oh, my God, I could never do that. And he said, well, if you ever change your mind, tell, you know, take this card, Jim South, world modeling, tell him Greg Rome sent you. Well, that's the guy. That was the guy that got me in. And I took the card. And I'm like, Ugh. but I didn't throw it away. And I, like, put it in my little underwear drawer when I got home. And then, like, a month or two later, I was down, like, $5.00. And I'm like, I'll just call and see who's going to watch this. No one watches this. No one's going to look at these magazines. And I called Jim South at like midnight or whatever and get the machine. 
you've reached world modeling. We are licensed and bonded. And I left a message going, hi, my name is Christy. I met a guy, Greg Rome, da, 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 da. That's Greg Rome. That's Greg Rome. He <laughs> pulled it up on his camera. Greg Rome. You are a genius. Thank That's you, Greg, Greg Rome. Rome. He got me in the business. Uh, yeah. He's like a young, yeah. Good looking, like a surfer yeah. guy. Uh -huh. And uh, so then Jim South called me back. So you were nervous? I was so nervous. And Jim's house like, well, come, come to the office, you know. And I walked in and I felt safe. Oh, yeah. I walked in and he's like, well, get naked. I need to take Polaroids. And I'm like, fuck me, he's going to try and attack me. But, you know, like there was that part of me, like I never gotten naked in front of a stranger. Yeah. Same way, I felt the same way, yeah. And he takes the Polaroid straight on, then the- Did he take it? Yeah. Oh. Fanny shot, he was the only one working there in 1984. Wow. And then he's like- Same spot. Yes, Van Nuys same Boulevard. spot, walked up those crickety stairs. And then he said, well, you know, let me take you to lunch at the Hamburger Hamlet. I mean, that place is, should be a historical I monument. Know. Every main porn star has dined there. No, I mean, the stair, I mean, Jim South's office, the stairway, all that. I mean. Oh, the stairway, yes. And then, Jim started like, you know, talking numbers. Oh, you can make 500 a day. If you're in penthouse, you can make 5,000. And I'm like, you know, in cartoons when they get like the dollar signs in their eye, whoop, whoop. Like I just saw dollar signs. And the Trans Am or whatever. And uh, Porsche. Wow. I went back, I always liked the Porsche. I went back and, you know, went to my job. And I just remember thinking, I don't want to work for 450 an hour anymore. I want to make $500 for something I'm doing for free anyway. An hour, right? $500, right. almost an hour. Right. And I quit my two jobs and the rest is history. I want to know, how was your first scene? Were you nervous or? Horrible. I did magazines for the first two months, oh. all magazine shoots. Then I get to a shoot and I pull up a house in the Hollywood Hills and I see big trucks and I see cameras going. And I'm like, what the hell? This isn't a magazine layout. Jim said something, it was a loop. Oh, you didn't know that <laughs> I was- I did not know what a loop was apparently. And <laughs> Whoa, really? Wow. For Swedish Erotica, Caballero. I love those movies. Swedish Erotica number 57. It looks like I had a shotgun to my head. And it was in bed with another girl, Stevie, big German girl. And some guy, and I don't remember the guy's name. Really? And then Ron Jeremy and I were fucking. And they're like, oh, this is Ron Jeremy. You'll be, you know, fucking him today. And I'm like, oh. now he was good looking. Don't get me wrong. He oh, might he be a, yeah. of like Judd Hirsch from Taxi. Remember that actor, Judd Hirsch? I, I think Ron's a good looking guy. But it was scary. And I don't think it would have mattered who it was. It was like, I'm having sex in 10 minutes with a guy I don't so, even know. So you didn't even know you were going to have sex. That's a little strange. And I remember crying after just because I thought, oh, my God, I came from upper, upper middle class. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> oh, no, really? <laughs> That's like one of those normal movies, the portrayals of porn, you know, all oh, bad. It was good. Yeah, it was. And I called Jim. I'm like, I can't do it anymore. I just da da da. And he's like, OK, but, you know, I do have you booked tomorrow for Paradise Visuals, blah, blah. And I'm like, fine, I'll do that. But then don't book me on anything else. And then the next day I go to a beautiful house in Sand Canyon. Remember that older couple made a man-made lake in the backyard? That's probably before my time. And I see Ginger Lynn and Peter North oh, and Tracy Lords. I'm no. like, maybe it's not so bad after all. Really? That's yeah. what you see? And after that day, I'm like, I love it, Jim. Really? Who do, did you work at Peter North or no? Not the first scene. Remember, it was Ginger and... Um, oh, Jamie. Yeah, that, so was that was my Jamie's. first scene. The next scene was Ginger Lynn and Peter North outside on a lounge chair. And you saw that? You, did you watch it? I was in it. Oh, that the was second my second scene. scene. And I'm like... Third scene, but yeah. This is great. I love this. Like, here I am outside on a lounge chair. The sun's shining on my body. I've got Peter North having sex with me. I've got Ginger Lynn's titties in my face. Like, life doesn't get any better hey, than this. Right. See? And that just changed my whole outlook on porn. Oh. And again, nothing against Swedish erotica, Ron Jeremy, whatever. But I was scared that first time. I was scared shitless. I mean, that's not like a young Peter North, you know what I mean? Or like a young Ginger Lynn. I mean, you know, Ron Jeremy's a good looking guy, but right? 
But I fucked. I had sex with uh, Ron Jeremy on and off camera many off camera times. Off yeah, Many times since then. So it was really not him. It was I was scared. scared I was shitless. petrified. I was scared my first scene. That scared shitless. Yeah. For sure. How could, I mean, it's, it, I, it was scary. It, I was like, this is going to change my life. It's not like little magazine layouts where you're like, you know, touching your boobie and your mouth is open. I mean, now it's like you got a dick in your holes. See, it's so, um, that was such a delicate situation yeah. because if you didn't have that beautiful scene the next day, yes. would you have gone back because you needed money? I don't know. I don't, I'm, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. but maybe not because then it goes back to I, didn't, I never really did anything I didn't want to do. Oh, you've got a strong personality. Because I didn't ever want to be like, oh, why did I do that? Now I don't like, I always wanted to love the business. All right, here's this question. Did you see drugs on the set? Once. Yeah? Once in Ooh. 84, 85, 85 maybe. Who? Oh, I don't want to say because I actually like the guy. Really? I mean, he's dying now, but I like him. He's dying? I mean, should I say it? And if you'd want Roy Karch. Oh, yeah, he was the only stuff. guy that yeah. ever offered me drugs. Oh. I got to say he was the only guy in all my years. So people think, oh, there's just drugs on the set. Not in my time. By Vivid, if you are caught with drugs, you were out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Roy was the only guy that ever offered me Coke or any drug. Yeah. And I, I mean, took it, of course. He's, um, he's, you took it? <laughs> See? I was 18. Uh, you know, I went through a very small drug stage with Heather Wayne. For anyone that remembers her, we yeah, became no, drug no, no, buddies. No, no. And it was fun. Cocaine? Yeah, much? that's it. Never anything else. Never needles, nothing. Very, and it was for like two to three months. But it was hard. I hit it hard. Yeah. I hit it fast and hard. Like to the point where the, even the drug dealer would be like, Christy, <laughs> get some sleep. Really? Yeah. yeah. But it was fun. Fun. I love. I, ever since I quit when I was 18, 19, whatever, I never did it again. Wow, that's I incredible. never did because I have an addictive personality. So I never wanted to get addicted. And I also thought I don't want to spend all my money. You know what I mean? But um, it, there, there was like maybe four months where I got into drugs. But it was fun. Yeah. But yeah. It was fun. I talked to PT on the show, right? And, you know, <laughs> PT likes drugs, right? He says, I say, so I worn this out, you know what I mean? But I like saying it. Yes. So forgive me, people. But um, he said, listen, why would I have sex without drugs if I've taken drugs that bring me so high for so many hours and I had such a great time? When I come back, why would I just have sex without drugs? That's that so PT. Huh? That is so PT. Oh, my God, he's so funny. I love PT. That is some, but no, no. And some people, you know, don't ever give them up. But no, I did do them. I wasn't that fucking puritanical. And I liked it. I had the cleanest condo in the building. Really? I'd be down there at five in the morning with the toothbrush. <laughs> really? Oh, because I, I had to do drugs alone even. You know, really? like if Heather had to go to work, I'd be like, okay, I'll see you back here. I'll get the eight ball tonight. Blah, blah. Sounds fun. I mean, it's fun. So, you know, at least you could look back and say you had a good time. Most people won't even admit to it. They just kind of, you know, I, I didn't do it. I'm glad that I did it when I was 18 with no responsibilities. Do you know? But I, I couldn't be around it now. The only thing I do now is I drink wine. Yeah, we, yeah when you get older, oh. you start change. Your brain changes. Your body, your brain. I can't even brain. imagine. I can't weird, even huh? imagine. Not That's my weird. thing. It's weird how you change. Yeah. Do you see that? Because you hopefully mature. Yeah, but your perception and perspective on so many right. different things are so different yeah. than they used to be. It's weird, right? I see it weird. But So who was your favorite girl to work with? God, I had so many for different reasons. Tracy Lords, because she was just a sexual lioness. I mean, she was just like a, Beauty. just ate me up. I mean, I would do anything for her. Ginger was also my favorite because... Her and I had this cute little young girl playfulness together. Did you ever mess around with her off camera? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot. Never Tracy, though. Tracy was business, man. Really? Once the scene was done, she was out. And you wanted to. I wanted to, but I look back now and I think she never really made friends with anyone because her whole life was a lie. She couldn't get close to anyone. I had heard Tom. I think he told me he used to mess with her. I think so. I think they did. 
Uh, but I didn't know her at all outside of making porn. I didn't know anything about her. Then there were girls like Raquel Darian that were my favorite because she was so fucking beautiful. So Jesus beautiful. Christ, that body, that face. I mean, pretty pussy, everything. Everything about her was so beautiful. Pretty. She Gorgeous. would never work with me because of her boyfriend, but I was, she was on my first set and I used to look at her and say, I know. oh my God, she's right. so pretty. So she was so pretty. So she was my favorite for a different reason. There was a girl, Jamie Summers. I worked with Jamie. I was a fan of her and I got to work with her. She was so cute, right? She was another favorite of mine. She made me quiver. She was so sexual. Yeah. Like I, I used to get like a little tongue tied around her because she'd be like, ooh, Christy, I get to have sex with you today. And she'd rub my hand or brush against my tit. And I'd be like, oh. You know when you get that, like she was so, so she was so sexual in a different way than Tracy. Tracy just wanted to eat you up for breakfast and spit you out for lunch. Whereas Jamie Summers just wanted to eat you up and then cuddle you all night. Do you know the difference? Like oh, she's cute. Oh like, my cute. god, I know. I, I I got the chance to work with her, right? And for PT, but then I, I was overpressured. I couldn't really enjoy it. I wasn't on on a hundred percent point, you know, it just was yeah, but she was so beautiful. I I hear you from a woman's perspective. That's how I like. I felt like I'm not going to be good enough for her. She was beautiful. So there were different girls she for different beautiful. reasons, but those are probably my top four girls that I love to work yeah, with. Yeah, Jamie Summers. I forget bringing. I forget her name all the time. I forget bringing her up. She was so, great though. Yeah. Fellow vivid girl also. Yeah, she was great. She, she was. was. I mean, I didn't get to know her. Only worked with her once. Right. But you know. I think I was at the very end, you know, 1990, and she was pretty much done, probably. 1990. I worked with her in, like, 91, 92. Really? For a movie called Victim of Love, Part 1 and Part 2. Maybe it was 91. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I worked with her in 91. But yeah. You know what? Yeah. After a couple decades, we're allowed to mess up by a year or two. <laughs> I got 30 years. You got 30. 35. 35 years. Since 84. Almost 36 years. What did your parents think about when you started doing the business? You know, we weren't talking when I got in. Well, you were out by yourself. Right. right. And to me, it was kind of like, fuck you. Look what I got into. Huh? Ha, ha, ha. You know what <laughs> I rebel, mean? You're a rebel, huh? Oh, big time. And, like, and then when I came out in Penthouse, I like put a copy of Penthouse in my dad's mailbox and my mom's because I it was so fucking beautiful, Penthouse. And I was like, Was they the nice job on it? Oh, beautiful. Just who's job. It or who's no, um, Stephen Hicks. I heard he's pretty good, right? He was amazing. No longer with us. Oh, really? He died at a young age. I mean, 50 or 60, but you know, he was so talented. Um, they, they were, I guess, I don't know. I didn't care. I was on me. And then, then they told my sister, well, we want to talk to her a couple years later. But I didn't talk to my parents for a few years. That was me. That was <laughs> Hustler 1989. That's 89? That's Hustler 89 shot by, um, Clive McLean. I'm going to take a sip of my water. How cool is that? Wow. I know. That's sexy, huh? I want to see the 84, man. How do I find that 84? Is that 84? No, that was Penthouse. That's the Penthouse shoot. That was Penthouse. I was in Hustler also in uh, February 85. Doug Hume shot it. Asian guy. Uh -huh. And uh, Wow, was, look at these are great. They called me Dee Dee in, in that. Wow, look at that. That's a great picture. I, they were great pictures. Wow. So eventually my parents wanted to. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> that looks nice, so I can't show this one. Let me see. Let me see, though, without others. I love it. Oh, that looks great. It's beautiful. Oh, that's wonderful. So then, uh, so eventually my parents said to my sister, oh, we want to talk to Christy, you know, we blah, blah, blah. And um, so then I eventually started talking to my parents again after about four years of not talking to them, though. And so, but you, you're your own person. So you said, see, when, when I quit the business, wait, let me backtrack. Sorry. I've got a head cold. I quit in 85, worked for my dad for four years. And then my mom, we were all talking there when I worked for my dad, obviously. But did, then you, I, did they know? Oh yeah. They knew and would oh. patch up. But then when I got back in the business, this is where I meant to go. I got sidetracked by looking at my own body on TT's phone. So then when I got back in the business in 1989, they found out I got back in and they cut me off. That's when we didn't talk for a few years. They were like, why would you get back in? And I was like, cause tell, tell them cause I, I like it. I'm okay with it. You know? So that's when we didn't talk again. Yeah. Me too. I had a great deal at, at Vivid. I got a royalty on it. It was, it was yeah. a great setup. So, um, 
when I got back in, you know, then they cut me off again. And then after like three, that's when the three or four years, cause we didn't talk when I got in the business. Then when I quit the first time work for my dad, my mom and I started talking again. But then when I got back in four years later, that's when they're like, we, we how can we talk to you? Look what you got back into. But, but I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I loved what I was doing. So then after three or four years, my sister said, oh, mom wants to talk to you. No, my mom wrote me a letter and she was like, I miss you, blah, blah, blah. And I wrote her back and I said, it's before text and email. And I said, you know, I'll talk to you again, but this is what I do. You know, we have to go to therapy together because I'm okay with what I do. You have to be okay with what I do. So we went to therapy together and then my mom was fine with it. And then my dad, we went to therapy too. And I just, I think I just had to explain to my parents, guys, I love what I do with my life. I'm a good person. I just do this for a living because I enjoy it. It's not anything tawdry. It's fun. You think that as the time went on, I know it, it, it seems like it, right? But also the people's mindset as time went on, because the adult business was so young, right? So yes. fresh, so young. And the perspective of the people's looking at it was not as open-minded as it is now. But yes. so in the 80s, it's so bad, but as you're back in 90 or 91 or whenever, right. 89, 90, 91, and you're talking to them like a little later, right? Yes. So the brain and the, um, let's say the, the, the word I'm looking for is the saturation of movies and adult material is hitting everybody or, you know, and you know, the mentality is changing. Do you think that changed their perspective too? Or you just said, hey, I'm going to change your perspective and all of it or, or we'll just. I think that they saw that I was okay. They knew that I was not on drugs. I wasn't a bad person. And they knew that that's who I was, take it or leave it. And I was okay if they left it. Uh -huh. Obviously I had proven that I was okay for four years when they wouldn't talk to me again. You know what I mean? I think that uh -huh. they realized we better love her for who she is uh -huh. or she's going to write us off. Uh -huh. yeah, you don't want to lose your daughter. You know? And they knew I was fine. Yeah. They knew I, you know, at the time I had got, I had a condo and this and that, like, I wasn't just like strung out on drugs and, you know, like yeah, yeah. I just happened to fuck once a month for a living, you know, big deal. And I shake my titties at a strip club. Like who cares? I'm okay with it. You need to be okay with it. Yeah. Do you know? And if you're yeah. not, I'll be really sad and hurt, but I really hope that you accept that this is who I am. I'm quirky. I'm kind of a rebel. I go against the grain. I march to the beat of my own drum. Then you got married. Three times. Your mom married three times? Oh, I got married? No, no, I mean, your mom, but you too. Dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Marriage didn't hold a lot of value in my, our family, I guess. But Tim Conley? I was married to a contractor for five weeks before Tim. Then I married Tim. Five weeks, huh? And two of the weeks I was dancing, one of the weeks I was shooting porn. He got a good solid 10 days out of the marriage. Are you hard to handle? Yeah. Yeah, you're better off being my friend. No, here's the thing. I'm a total alpha uh, because I've had to be and I like to be. So if you come into this being an alpha and expect to make me a sub, oh, you are in for a rude awakening. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Don't tell me what to do because at 53, I'm doing pretty fucking well. Thank you very much. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a trip. This is your whole life you're an alpha? Yeah. yeah, I had to be at 17, 18. I just learned how to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I've never had anything to fall back on. I've never had anyone to pick it up if it got rough in the waters. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, so I learned to be okay on my own. So you can come into my life, but don't try and change who I am because I think I've done pretty damn good for myself. Yeah, I think so. And especially if you're happy with yourself. Like you totally. Are. That, and the other side of the coin is, and I do got to wrap this up. The other side of the coin is, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you can't tell me what to do, but I'm in charge. Of, I don't want to be in charge of anyone. That's too much fucking pressure. No. I'm in charge of me, myself, and I kind of thing. I don't want to have to take care of you in any way, shape, or form. Oh, you passed that for sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you're that way always? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So I have two questions. One is, how was it working for Vivid? The best. 
I can't say enough great things about that company. They have been just the most amazing company to me since 1990. They're the best. They were the utopia. They were the apex. They were the top of the top. They were up here. Down here was wicked and vivid. And no one was in between. Do you know what I mean? That's how I look at it. Now, if you're a wicked girl, you're going to think the opposite or whatever. But to me, it didn't get any better than being a vivid girl. Yeah, being a vivid girl had a lot of prestige. A lot. And he treated us with nothing but love and respect. Really? Hey, was he not, yeah, Steve, you're saying. He's a great guy, and yeah. Marcy's great. Oh, the whole family. Yeah, cool. All right, so then um, I guess this is going to bring us to the last question. Can you describe? It's simple. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that little evil grin, though. <laughs> the guy you scared, right? <laughs> Suspense. Can you describe in two words your experience in the business? Perfectly wonderful. That's a hard question to answer in two words. Amazing, awesome, the best. Uh, I love, I gotta say, not one bad experience. Even when Ed tried to lick my pussy when I was 18, I got up and it was kind of fun. Who knew 35 years later I'd talk about it on TT Boys show. You know what I mean? Like. I don't have any bad experiences. I'm sorry, I forgot one question. And thank God you have, you know, great experiences. What, can you give me a really wild, you say you gave me some pretty good stories, but is there any wild, crazy story you have of being on a set, you know, in the 80s or the, probably more of the early 80s, I'm guessing, but any, any of them. God, wild stories. Our sex scenes were wild. And I got to tell you, they weren't wild like, yeah, there were drugs all over. Yeah, they were wild. We were drunk. No, sorry to break anyone's, you know, stereotypical thought. No one was drunk on set. We were there for a business. And if we got caught with a needle in our arm on an illegal porn set, we were all in a lot of trouble to begin with. So drugs were not allowed except the one time when someone offered me, but that's one time. Um, and I'm sorry to disappoint people. There were no wild orgies going on the porn sets unless the camera was on. We didn't want to, like, when I was fucking a guy for the first time, I wanted to feel his cock and experience it on film for the first time. Cause there's nothing like that first time you're with a new person, whether it's a pussy or a cock. Wild, even after the shoots were done. There, I, I hate to be like a Pollyanna and a bore and virginal. There weren't that many. Just shooting porn was wild in itself. That was wild enough for me. Does that make sense? Like yeah. just being on a shoot and seeing Ginger Lynn getting fucking gang banged or DP'd was wild for me. I remember the first time it was on, I dream of Ginger and Ginger's getting one dick in her ass and one in her pussy. And I'm like, Oh, 84, 85. Yeah. 84. That's fucking wild. I've never seen a girl take one in each hole at the same time. So other people's thoughts of what wild were, were different than what I thought was wild to me. Watching a girl get fucked in the ass for the first time was wild for me, for me, watching a girl get, you know, DP'd was crazy for me, like crazy wild. Like the rhythm of one going in the rear and one in the puss. And then like, they were like a seesaw to me. That was wild. Um, so there wasn't anything wild outside of just being on a porn set at 18 was wild for me. Yeah, you already, yeah, you already said that. So I'm going to say that the stories you already told me, the comedians being at home and all that wild, those are the great stories. Those are the wild stories. Those were wild. Bringing, you know, like a top comedian home and, yes. and watching him fuck my, you know, like, oh my God, I just saw his movie and now he's in my you know, roommate's bedroom banging her on her bed and I'm yeah. back there playing with his balls. That to me was considered wild. Yeah. That's where I like to keep my wild box. I, I didn't want to do the whole wild where like, I never went to raves. I never got fucked up and took pills. I didn't know what they were. That to me wasn't fun. That's the other thing. I, ha I said I was alpha. I always need to be in control. I don't want to lose control because once I lose control, I don't know what's going to happen to me. So I never really got into wild drugs and hallucinogenics because I don't want to lose control. I'm a control freak. Uh, so there's your answer. There we go. I think it's a great answer. 
I appreciate you coming so I much. I love you, TT. She spent all this time with me. And she has a lot of things in her life to do, so it's for her to come down and take this time. Oh, out. I wouldn't thank say you. no for anything. I love you so much. Really, thank I you. love you. I really do, from my heart. Oh, I love you, too. We're too alpha. We'd never end up together. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> way alpha. I'm the scariest alpha you ever saw. <laughs> I, you, I'd have to become a sub to you, which it would be worth it, and it was worth it in films. But that's the thing, like... I am such an alpha, and I know you are, and I respect that alpha. You you are such an, and I respect that. I don't know if I could ever be with an alpha outside of making films or how we are just such great it's friends. Interesting, huh? the, yeah. The and dynamics I, of people. You got to respect the other alphas and know they aren't going to change you, and you are not going to change them, and you don't want to. That's why I don't want anyone to change me. I am who I am. I don't want, I don't want anybody to change Hell me. Hell no. I don't need help. I don't need you to rescue me. I don't need you to pay my fucking bills. <laughs> I am in charge of me. I don't want to even be in charge of you. It's too much work. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You do you, you and I'll do me, and if we get along, great. <laughs> and if we don't, great. <laughs> and you're hanging out with Rob still. Yeah. That's great. I like him. He's cool. Cool. I'm going to give him your number. Okay. So, all right, baby. I adore you. You are amazing. You are awesome. I'm going to go home and take my NyQuil and crawl in bed and drink. <laughs> <laughs> and watch stupid TV. Yeah, I love you, TT. Cool.